And Mick. What's up? Nothing. It's podcast. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds fun. You wow. want to do it? Um, yeah, I, I, I could do one, sure. I could do, I could do a pod. I could try. I could try a pod. I, could I don't try know if I'm dressed for it, but sure. Let's do it. <laughs> Zelda in the podcast. Bum, 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 bum. Hey everybody, welcome to the Zelda Informer Podcast. My name is Adam, and that opening was brought to you by Brandon. Thanks so much for that. Uh, if you have any of your own topics, theme song submissions, or anything of that nature, please send those to us at ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. That's ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. Uh, here's the news for this week. After 25 years, Nintendo is bringing back the Nintendo World Championship, and Reggie has finally confirmed his participation in an announcement video on YouTube. In spiritual successor news, Ukulele is making serious strides with its stretch goals as it passes the $2 million mark in the 10 days that's been up. And in its first day, Castlevania's successor, Bloodstained, reached almost all of its stretch goals at $1 million. The project is headed by none other than Koji Igarashi, creator of the series and one of the pillars of the Metroidvania genre. And in Nintendo news, tired of not knowing what day of the month it is, then having to look at a boring normal calendar to find out? Well, look no further than this Legend of Zelda 2016 wall calendar, available now for pre-order on Amazon. And President and CEO of Nintendo, Satoru Iwata, held a Q&A session on Saturday and mentioned how he'd like to make the NX console region-free. It seems that this is happening on a daily basis now. A 17-year-old has just beat the any% percent speedrun record for Ocarina of Time. And earlier this week, a video was posted of two men in jetpacks soaring over the skies of Dubai. Also, this quest is far from over. King's Quest's recent revival title has released its cast list that boasts some incredibly high-ranking actors. The Ratchet & Clank movie's cast continues to grow as well-known voice actors and film actors join the fold. Ubisoft has finally shown off its latest addition to the Assassin's Creed family. The newly titled Assassin's Creed Syndicate was shown off during a live stream this Tuesday. And for those of you who still have some Club Nintendo coins left over, good news! The soon-to-be-gone reward program just sliced some of their prices nearly in half. You can get stuff like Majora's Mask 3D Messenger back for 500 coins. All of this and more on this week's podcast. Once again, I'm Adam, your host as always, and this week I'm joined by... Hey kitties, I'm back. And, uh, I'm Caleb, for those of you who don't know. And, uh, I heard there's Metroidvania talk, so I'm here for that. <laughs> Glad to have you. Thanks. Ooh. Uh, hey, it's Jeff. I'm back this week, and, um, it's good to be here. Kind of last minute call, but always up for a podcast, more or less. You sound so delighted. <laughs> we <laughs> Speaking of delighted, I'm Mick Lauer, Rice Pirate from Sleepy Cabin. I make cartoons and fart jokes and uh, some podcast stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good to be here to talk about some Zeldas and some Lynx and some Ganondorfs. I'm, some, I'm uh, definitely down for some of that Ganon jazz. Ganondorfels. Do you think uh, anyone calls Nick. them like Dorfels or something? Dwarfs? Dorfs? Ganon dorks? Yeah. Ganon dorks. Yeah, Get out of here, Ganon dork. Just like in high school. Yeah, that's, what, that's why he was so angry. Yeah, so he's just a bad guy. <laughs> getting back at the bullies. Yeah. The Hylians never let me play in their Hylian games. He's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in my imagination for some reason. Yeah, they, they all called him a red skin and like, you know, <laughs> oh my boot him off and <laughs> ran him out of town. There is a surprising number of racist theories in the Zelda universe. Like, <laughs> the fan theories, like the Hylian Civil War and stuff. It's terrible. Or awesome, problem. one or the other. He has good fashion <laughs> sense. I, I like what he. Dre- I like his uh, his his uh, color scheme for when he dresses. Oh, and like Hyrule Warriors. Uh, just in general, he ten- doesn't he wear a lot of black? He wears a lot of black. Yeah, with, like this like cool like sort of texturized like little lettering and details on all, it. All good in my book. All yeah. good in my book. <laughs> Ganondorf to I the end. I have a question. Yeah. Well, I have a question for Mick. Oh no! Uh, do you have you watch? <laughs> Hold on. It, this just popped in my head and. I don't know how you'll take it, but have you ever watched the show Parks and Recreation? <laughs> um, I've I've seen uh, clips of it, and I'm very aware of it, but I have not sat down and watched the whole okay. episode. Okay, Adam, you've watched it, right? I have. I have not okay. seen the last season because Hulu decided. That, to... That's okay. That's okay. Um, <laughs> okay. I was just thinking he sounds like the radio talk one of the radio talk show guys from that. Oh my god! So basically, like. Uh... Is this a compliment, or it? should I be very angry right it was, now? It's like those, Both. like, uh, morning zoo radio a... show hosts, like, Hey, welcome to Wacky in the Butt! <laughs> My rage meter is climbing. Let's, <laughs> let's move on to the first topic. <laughs> Don't tell them the name of it. 
Wait, yeah. the I don't want to go. Oh, I, yeah. If I Google this, I I might I might go Ganondorf on you. <laughs> no, don't tell him the name of this. This is just I thought it would be funny, but now I regret it. Let's go to Zelda. News. <laughs> I like Zelda news. Maybe he's like oh, he's yeah, like those guys after they do the episode. What's funny about that? And I'm sorry to get off topic, I guess. Uh, what but topic? the funny thing about that that like sort of bit in that show is that they're like these two horrible people on the radio show, but like outside of it, they're really nice and actually very intelligent. They're like, yeah, yeah, let's, uh, did you see that new, uh, uh, TED talk? Yeah, I loved it. It was really fascinating, actually. All right, let's go. But get then back when to they the... do their show, they're all yeah. like, wow, yeah, 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 look at this poop. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like dumb. prank calls. Yeah, but tell me what you do like. Do you like Zelda? I do like Zelda. Would you like <laughs> oh, to talk about Zelda? Oh, snippity snap. Yeah, please continue. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's start with a fan topic this week. We never really do that. <gasps> um, <laughs> Jeff is so excited because he saw the fan topic for this week. Um, well, I'm excited because I know, because I know, I think oh, okay. I can predict your response. I think I can yeah. d- Nick, predict your response. Nick, we around the bush it. a lot here, by the way. We have two fan topics. Thank you to those of you who sent in fan topics this week, by the way. Um, but here it is. Uh, hey, guys. Well, a beat in the bush is worth two in the birds. What? Just just read. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Caleb. Hey, guys. Thanks for the great show. Wind Waker is the first Zelda game I beat, and I want to replay it, but I'm torn. Should I play the new game plus mode on my Wii or play Wind Waker HD on Wii U? There are advantages to both, but I wanted your guys' opinion. Which is the better version of the game? And Adam, the answer isn't none of the above. Oh, wow. I didn't see that part of it. Uh, I like this person already. Thanks, Aaron Troy. Thank you, Aaron Troy, for giving me no answers to say. <laughs> hey, Aaron. New Game Plus. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's surprising because I'm going to go with Wind Waker HD. Oh, God. It begins already. <laughs> hey, Aaron. Uh, my advice is don't wait to tell her, okay? She's... <laughs> She is waiting for you. You need to just make the move, okay? I promise this is the best decision you're going to make. It's not if. It's, it, it's it, There's no ifs to this. You just walk right up to her when you see her tomorrow at the cafeteria. You sit right down next to her and you tell her exactly what you want to do with her. And we're, we're talking Wind Waker HD. I want to play Four Swords Adventure with you. Yeah, Four Swords. You want to smack some Four Swords around with her. <laughs> These are my three buddies, Hank, Ted, Phil. I want to play Four Swords. <laughs> Don't do that. It's terrible. You don't know. This episode is off to a bad start. <laughs> could be the I best. don't know. I, I'm enjoying it already. This is my favorite podcast yet. This is my favorite. Um, this is my favorite yeah. anything but I yet think, with Caleb. <laughs> my, I think I'm going to say Wind Waker HD because you skip like half of the nonsense that goes on the regular game. Because like there's all this like... The reason I don't like Wind Waker is the fetch questing. Mm. So much fetch questing. Get out on this boat, travel to this place, pick up this item. Now do it forty more times with so what no you're actual. Saying is you don't like video games. <laughs> with no actual impact on the story. But I am genuinely, you, I am genuinely curious. Like you know, Zelda, they they like to change up the formula for the the kind of gameplay that you have, the look right. and the feel. Yeah. And and I'm curious, do you guys? Because you guys would know better than I would if they were ever planning on revisiting. That style, revisiting that tiny little link with the big head, and um, like actually, that kind of the thing style. about that is that that's really just the Toon Link style, which happens a lot. Uh, Four Swords Adventures, Wind Waker, uh, Minish Cap, and a few other games have all had that same uh, aesthetic style, just not in the same sort of medium. So instead of three D, it'll be in two D. And it's right, right. been restricted to handheld. I see. Yeah. Uh, As actually, Spirit Tracks um, has the three D sort of style, but it has a two D. Sort of game. It's weird. It kind of falls it's in the middle. Down. It's top yeah. down. But it's kind of um, an angle. Yeah. But uh, I actually recently started playing Wind Waker HD after a long hiatus from Wind Waker because I played through the original. Um, but I'm going to have to say Wind Waker HD, even though I haven't finished it, for the for one reason alone. When I played the original Wind Waker, I loved it. I played it with one of my best friends. We had a great time. And then we got to the Triforce fetch quest. Didn't mm. finish the game. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, I'm see, numbered. couldn't it's get a, through it. It's the exact same reason I don't like it. It's just like it's not fun to fetch quest, especially in a game like Zelda, where it's like you expect a story with everything you do. Albeit sometimes it's a kind of frail one. It's it, there's still one there. Like you still have purpose. Can I change my answer? Sure. Play Twilight <laughs> Princess instead. <laughs> That's your answer for everything. You're right. It's not a bad answer. <laughs> just like Twilight Princess. It's not a bad answer. Amid. Um, but I mean. At the very it's least, it's not a ba- yeah, it's not a bad answer. You know, it's you know, it's funny. I could never like. I remember the first time I played one, it. One thing I'd like to ask. I... <laughs> Do 
Jeff? Yes. Are you gonna were you gonna finish that thought? Were you you, were you, you had finish? a thought too and I mean I stopped. I thought. kinda waited kinda waited for you. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff go first. <laughs> okay. Let's not um, have this politeness battle. I'm sorry. Um I wanted to ask, um, what was the what was the person's name who submitted the fan topic? Aaron. Aaron. A A Ron. Uh, I would want to ask Aaron, um, does he already own Wind Waker HD and does he already own a Wii U? Because then yeah, I, yeah, yeah, he, I think sense. he has it. it right, it's let's pretty, wait for his response. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, let's wait for his response right now. Um, <laughs> because if he does own those, sure. But if he has to spend like uh, six, <clears throat> 50 bucks on a new Wii U game to get that, maybe not. The new game plus could yeah. do it for him. Um, obviously, there's a lot of nice things in Wind Waker HD. It looks you know yeah. prettier and but if you're gonna if you're gonna buy another things. zelda game buy a different zelda game in the franchise play yeah. something else like try yeah. something else i guess and if you want that style again try spare tracks aaron look i'm gonna have a heart to heart with you <laughs> there's a lot of bloom if you want to be able to see your video game then you should play the gamecube if you don't want to play train in the background <laughs> if you don't no it's not a, i don't whatever <laughs> spirit tracks. you're having a heart to heart with him i feel like it's, train is appropriate and, and you ruin it continue <laughs> Um, but I was actually going to say, um, today I was actually thinking about playing some Zelda and I was going to play Wind Waker HD, but I was like, you know what? I still need to play A Link to the Past. So I booted up A Link to the Past. Now I'm <laughs> three. Now I, I beat three of the, I beat, I beat the first three. Wasn't that, didn't uh, we start temples. that together? Okay. We started that together, but you were just like, let's go in circles. And I'm like, Adam, I haven't played this game. I want to enjoy it. And you're like, I've played it before. So I'm just going to run in circles. Wait yeah. a minute. Wait a minute. You've never played Link to the Past? Yeah. I don't know um, how his I'm on are... his, ba- I'm on mixed bad list. No, you're not. It's just like, I thought this was a Zelda podcast. That's like, that's you know... like a, a, like we're doing a religious podcast and you were like, <laughs> who's Jesus? Like, it's just like, it seemed like one of the, besides the first one, I think Link to the Past is like, one of the quintessential Zelda games that brought it over. It, I mean, I think that that really put the stake in, in the... Sell the... Sold the franchise to the West. Yeah, yeah I, definitely. I think so, It's the sure. third game in the franchise, and after Adventure of Lang, which didn't sell, which no, didn't do very well. No, two was garbage. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But There's three, when they came back with that, that... Yeah. I'm sorry? Oh, I was going to say, uh, two pod, two podcasts in a row, we've made explicit uh, bashing of Zelda 2. Oh, yeah, of, of Adventure of Link, yeah. It's yeah, funny because our it. ed- ed- our editor in chief uh, Nate is a big fan of Adventure of Link. That's probably he's not really though. He's not though. <laughs> he's he's a contrarian. He's trying to be a hipster. He's trying to be cool. Nobody likes that game. Hipsters. It's a terrible game. Nate, he's Nate, calling you, you out. Better, you better listen to this podcast. Fight, fight, fight. I mean, I mean, name one. You know what? I'll I'll shut up if you can name one actual good thing about it. You know, <laughs> besides down- the name. Besides what about the, the downward fed- the sword strike? The fact that I'm not you know what? to play it is nice. Yeah, exactly. Me not playing it. That's about the best <laughs> thing in, in that whole franchise. Thank you, Caleb. Amen, brother. <laughs> I um, remember playing it. It was hard as hell. Yeah. It's not... You know why it's hard? It's because it's bad. It's just, <laughs> it's just poorly designed. It's, the, it's just the, the controls are clunky and weird and you slide around. I just... there's That's why it's hard. In my opinion, I remember okay. watching a, a Let's Play of it, and I just like it's a lot of the enemies are just frustrating. Like, yeah, and that's that's a problem. A lot, like a lot of people have that problem, I guess, with Ocarina, where it's just like you're fighting these enemies, but it's mostly just like a it's it's a waiting game more than anything, and you're not really doing anything. Yeah. Whereas, well, um, if we're gonna accuse any game of having a waiting game in terms of how to fight enemies, that's Skyward Sword. Skyward I mean, Sword. I love the game to death, but yeah, Skyward Sword. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but actually, talking about Skyward Sword, that reminds me of a, another fan topic we received from uh, Darren, who asks... Oh Darren, why? <laughs> uh, are Link's eyes too big in Skyward Sword? End question. That was the whole question. And I'm sorry, that sounds like I'm making fun of you. I'm not. I really appreciate that you wrote in. But, um... Well, whenever I played Skyward Sword, I always had this running joke with Chef that Link has these, like, really blank eyes because he keeps staring into the sun. Because every, like, two minutes, I would just stop whatever I was doing and look up towards the sky and try to find the sun and just stare at it until Jeff would make me stop. Usually through I mean, force. I mean, it's I don't know how you could game. say that. Oh, go ahead, Caleb. Oh, I just said it's better than playing the game. Mm. 
Um, it was. I was going to say, if you can accuse any Link of having enormous eyes, why not go for Wind Waker Link? Yeah, that guy has an eye that looks like you could stick your whole arm through it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Adam, keep your fetishes to a minimum, please. <laughs> Ooh. Thank you, Caleb. <laughs> uh, but yeah, to answer your question, I, I guess... I guess I don't know. I don't think so. I think it really fits the aesthetic, and I mean, it's it's kind of. I guess that's an interesting question to ask. Do you think like there's ever been like a really weird design choice that you guys have seen in a Zelda game? Pink hair. Well, that um, was that was for like all of all of Zelda two. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the I Hate Zelda two co- podcast by Mitt Glower, <laughs> uh, featuring Zelda Informer. <laughs> featuring Zelda Informer, Mick and the Zelda Informer. Yeah, there you we go. Could be Are a we band. a band now? Yeah. yeah, we could be a band. We should start a band. <laughs> Let's start yeah. a band, guys. Oh, God. <laughs> so much to talk about this week. Because I, I saw all the news about um, Nintendo. There, did you guys see their announcement this week? The, Which one? Meant, the E3 uh, announcement? The E3 announcement, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. it wasn't as good as last year, I think. I, it's, I don't know. It's hard to beat the uh, Reggie fils mech. Yeah, but at the that same really time, fun. Nintendo World Championship is making a comeback. I prefer so this one. What, what, can you guys can you guys clarify this to me? Because from the outlook of it, is this like is this like the Wiz? Yes, it is yes. exactly like the Wiz. Oh, because it, we didn't call it. We called it. I think we called it Nintendo Fest or something. What the? What did we call it? Um, I went to it when I was a kid. Really? Oh, nice. I went to one at the Kingdom in downtown Seattle, and they did the whole thing where you had to play like Rad Racer, Tetris. Mar- mm. You had to, like first, like you had to collect like a certain amount of coins in Mario, and then you had to do a thing, and I think it was Rad Racer, and then you had to. I think the last one you had to clear was Tetris. Um, uh, are you but there was about a bunch of games. Nintendo Power Fest. It, whatever it was, whatever it no, was that's in what, the Wiz. that's what went on in the championship. If I'm not mistaken, it was those three games. Like you, you had to do certain tasks in each of those three games. Yeah, it was kind of like NES Remix. But, yeah, and then it was like a yeah, 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 and then you were timed on it, or you got actually you weren't timed on it. I remember there was uh, there's a cartridge for it. There was actually there? is there's like a Nintendo World Championship cartridge from 1990 that you can. Yeah, but find. we didn't call. That's the thing that confused me is they they called Nintendo World Championship. That's not what we called it when I was a kid. I'm trying to remember what it was called. No, I think I think you're talking about something else. No, because... no, 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 no. I'm pretty sure because if it's what the Wiz was, that's exactly what it was. No, I think he's on the. There was same an actual thing. Nintendo World Championship in 1990. I think you're, I think maybe Mick's talking about the like event leading up to, and then the world championship was like everybody who competed in that coming together. Oh, maybe it's, are you referring to like an actual event that was annual? No, no, no. I just remember it happening once, and it happened at the Kingdome in downtown Seattle. Hmm. Uh, That might be slightly different then. Interesting. Maybe it was the local version of that. Did you compete? Could have been. I did. How'd you do? I didn't do very well. (laughs) Aww. I I am curious. They comeback. they they made a big deal out of the bringing back the Nintendo World Championship, but we have no idea what games are coming to it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, they they. The fun. I think on the thirtieth they're going to announce how to actually enter, which is weird <laughs> because that gives people like fifteen days. Wait on May. No, May thirtieth is when they're having people go to Best Buy to compete, right? Oh, is that where they're having the competitions? I, I well, they're having saying... local competitions, and you can enter if you if you win those, then you oh, uh, you could go is? to E three. Oh, okay. And compete there. Yeah. What what sucks for me is that they said they're doing it on Sunday the fourteenth, but I'm going E three this yeah. year. My flight gets in on the fifteenth because the conference does not start until Tuesday. I'll do it for you, Dad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, son. Proud of um, you. But it, it's just fr- frustrating because that's like a really exciting event. I was really hoping to see, but. They're not even doing it at E3, technically. They're doing it, like, before. <laughs> well, Nintendo never really does anything at E3. Well, that's, that's what they, so frustrating to Did me. they do that with the Smash tournament last year? I feel like something started I don't think before. so. I think the Smash tournament actually took place, like, right after E3. Like, it took place on that Thursday or Wednesday. I, so. I mean, Nintendo does what they want. <laughs> they do what they want with E3. That's true. Um, I mean, they... We already knew that Square was doing uh, their conference at uh, 9, 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. And Nintendo announced that they're doing it that time too. So wait, Square's got their own conferences here. Square has their own a lot of a lot of companies. Bethesda have has their own up. conference this year, I yeah. think, and Valve has their own conference this year. It's yep. a really interesting year oh, because I can't it's like wait for Valve to show nothing. Because yeah, that's I think they're going to be showing off their um their uh virtual reality thing. They're, oh, they're good because I'm not burned out. With I that feel like already. they're just going to talk yeah. about their Steam machines. Mick, yeah, you. I, you were a kid in the, the 80s, right? Yeah. Yes. So, I so was. like <laughs> the, so I guess like the whole like 
virtual reality thing was a started when you were a kid and now it's making kind of a comeback is that kind of weird for you to see that sort of happening again yeah i mean when i was a teenager is when we started seeing the oh, okay the, yeah and that's when they actually had those head things and, and the virtual boy yeah well no the actual you know you'd go to like a, a party or you'd go to an arcade and they actually had like the big head thing it, it looked like oh. uh you, you doc brown and back to the future it was like <laughs> right <a huge> yeah <laughs> Except it had a visor on it, and you could see in it. Um, and I wasn't sure. I mean, it, back then, it seemed like everyone was talking about how it was going to be the next big thing. And mm -hmm. then it just kind of faded out. There was even a movie, um, Disclosure, I think it was called, with uh, Michael Douglas and uh, Demi Moore. And that had a lot of, quote-unquote, VR in it. Um, and that wasn't as well. But, yeah, I mean, as far as virtual reality is concerned, yes. There, there was a period of time when everyone talked about it. We saw it. We got a glimpse of it. It seemed really cool, um, but it, I guess it just wasn't practical in any way, and mm -hmm. it kind of vanished off the radar. And then Oculus came out. Um, I mean, there's there was a bunch of you know Virtual Boy. There was there was some kind of like you know fakey little Cracker Jack prize VR things we saw, but yeah. this was like you know the Oculus I think is the first thing that kind of seems remotely legitimate. Feasible. And now that it has like Facebook backing, right? Facebook yeah, bought it or Facebook something. Bought yeah. It. Yeah, I've so heard it seems anything like about it. <laughs> I haven't either. They bought it and just like tucked it under their bed. But I feel like, yeah, that could be saving this for later. <laughs> if they have backing like that, then sure. Then you know, clearly, if they have, mm -hmm. you know, the visionaries that Mark Zuckerberg has hired right. for to to make up for his own his whatever fleet of drones. Yeah, then oh, uh, fine. That's cool. I'm actually surprised like Google didn't buy up one, but I guess they yeah. have their own one too, right? They have like a little. Yeah, I think they're working with. No, that's uh, Valve is working with Android. Oh, with, with Android, Samsung. Okay. okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It was the Samsung thing. So yeah, yeah I guess I'm curious why Google hasn't. Well, they were working on Google Glass, I know for a while, and they recently like pulled it back, and they're like, "We're gonna work on this even more, but like focus on working on it instead of like selling it to people." Yeah, because um, instead so, it looks like they just kind of did nothing. Cause I they, think they're they're kind of being like, instead of trying to make virtual reality, how about we just like mod reality, like do modulus yeah. reality? Well, that's kind yeah. of so like uh, Microsoft with their what's that room called? Hollow Hollow Deck? Not Hollow yeah. Deck. Well, it's called? basically that. No, it's basically a Hollow Deck though. It's basically a Hollow Deck, but it's not called that. Um, can you imagine playing a Zelda game in like virtual reality? Because I know you can play Link to the Past. Using like an Oculus Rift now. I can't wait to play Zelda 2 in VR. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, yeah, Nightmare Simulator 5000. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe you know what? Maybe that game if they remade it, if they remade it and it was like, you know, in virtual reality, maybe it would be decent. I don't know. There'd be a lot of jumping. Like I feel like you'd get really yeah. tired. <laughs> How was your day? Oh, yes. I played some Zelda 2. I puked blood because I jumped so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, it's a little it's a little day. <laughs> little things. But uh, speaking of PCs and wonderful things and mods, um, I recently got into Skyrim for the PC, and I mean, oh God, no, please don't do this. To me. <laughs> I have to. I immediately decided to download like forty mods for it. I thought it was really good because I've played Skyrim rip before already, and you know, I was, I was like, eh, I don't want to. I, would, I wouldn't really have done this if I didn't have those mods, and it really did make the experience a lot cooler. I got some like new quests. They fixed a lot of things that I thought were wrong with the game. Um, do you, Did think you get the tank mod where like you shoot the tank and then it like flies in the air and you can just keep firing it and you can like go into the sky? <laughs> no, but this sounds amazing. <laughs> what no, is this? I, it's it's not it's not a mod. Oh, uh, <laughs> it was a GTA hack actually. I think. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I just GTA imagined the tank in Skyrim. <laughs> uh, lately, GTA has had a number of very interesting hacks. There's the fire breathing yeah. cat. There's the whale. And there's the, the whale. heard of the whale. The yeah, whales falling whale. from the sky one. Yeah, that's amazing. No, I, I believe that's just you playing as a whale. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a whale. Have you guys ever seen that Secret Agent Bob's like little oh. short clip? Mm -mm. No. But anyway, my original question: Do you guys think games like The Legend of Zelda would benefit from the addition of mods? Oh. I think every game can benefit from the addition yeah. of mods. <laughs> yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, it's like, why why wouldn't you? Um, I mean, people could say that you're kind of ruining the, the experience. Like, you're kind of... And don't play with them. Yeah, Altering. I would say not to do it as your first experience. I, I would say play the game as, as it is so you can enjoy it for what it was meant to be enjoyed as. And then once you've played the crud out of it in that form, 
go crazy. Like Zelda 2? You, you know what? You know what? There's a really... <laughs> I actually... I've heard there's a good mod for Zelda 2. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one where you delete it. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> called the delete mod. And you, you never step turn it on. on. The, you step yeah, on the and cartridge. You smash it and then you pee on it and set it on fire. Um, you yeah. send it to me. You send it to Miyamoto. Yeah. And say wow. why? Why? I this? forgot we had Sass Pirate on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Found mad. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, initially, my gut reaction was I'm not a big fan of the idea of um, modding that kind of game. But I get the idea. If you're if you've enjoyed the game and you just want a different experience, nothing wrong with uh, changing it. I will also add that mods, you know, you've got things like Dark Souls, which are broken and have issues, and mm -hmm. mods are also good to have in order to fix things. So really? you can actually play your video game. <laughs> so I can put a tank in Dark Souls. Finally, the way the game was meant to be played. Or just have it run at, you know, sixty frames like it should. Yeah. I don't have to. I don't have to fight against the blood starved beast with a knife. I can use a I, huge listen, rocket. I I have no problem. I I'm curious what is going on with. I love Bloodborne a mm -hmm. lot, but I have mm -hmm. no idea what the heck is up when you bring in co op people. It lags like, it lags like a mofo. It's like I'm getting yeah. last week's news. It is so. <laughs> no, seriously. It like it gets really bad, especially like if you enter Old Yarnum and there's all the fire particles and stuff. I, I'm sure mm -hmm. that's part of it, but oh yeah, man, it just gets if if you get like, I've invaded people where they had, like, two co-op people, and it's, like, running at, like, 10 frames a second or, or less. I don't know. It's <laughs> choppy. It's so choppy. It's just a bunch of moving pictures. There's an old man, like, just kind of moving, like, and here we go, and here's ten, like, 10 seconds later. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it might as well have, like, a little meanwhile bubble at the top of the screen every <laughs> single frame. Cause it's Back just, in like... the layer. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. I mean, we're talking what uh, new, new next gen gaming and stuff. And, and other than that, I mean, it's great solo. But man, when mm -hmm. that happens, it just kind of drives me crazy. It's funny because recently there was a Splatoon global test fire where yeah. they were basically checking to see if the servers could handle the the volume of people. How did it And go? Um, it depends on on where you were playing it from. A lot of people said that they were the game went fine. Some people I saw were like spending an hour. At the mo just for a Nintendo to... game that's online, just... it went really well. Yeah, yeah, that's the yes. thing. It actually it worked for some people, and that's a, a that's an A plus in Nintendo's mind. There's um, actually some lesser known like good examples of Nintendo online. One of them that stands out for me is uh, Kid Icarus Uprising, that has oh, yeah, surprisingly I've... good online play. Yeah, but that's 3ds. Which that is, is, is a 3ds. Little... Yeah, uh, and I uh, a and, bit. and definitely less complex than Splatoon was. Um, mm -hmm. Probably part of the problem with Splatoon is I mean they pick very specific periods of time and just for an hour and yeah they they kind of overloaded yeah. their own servers i think that was part of the idea though was to overload the server as much as you can to see yeah, how right. much you can push it so they know how to fix it and be ready because i think a lot of a lot of companies will make like a, a beta period or something but make it very limited access and make it very difficult for people to even do it altogether so a lot of the time they don't have the right idea of how much they're going to be pushing the servers mm -hmm. um yeah, I th I think but, uh, that's also part of the reason why they're um, uh, in the direct. They announced that they're going to be slowly releasing more modes for online, uh, mm -hmm. more stages, things like that. I think that's partially because they really are being very, very careful about how how well they mm -hmm. can handle their online. Yeah. I think I think it'd be interesting to see how that kind of plays into Zelda. U. I mean, you're talking about how in uh, Bloodborne you have the co-op mode and stuff. Mm. I think that we might see something in Zelda U that might be. Possibly similar, because I, whenever I see uh, Dark Souls or Bloodborne, I always think, you know, this is where Zelda could go, depending on who's in charge of it. You said that a couple of times. What What, what is your... I, I'm just curious why why you keep coming back to that. Do you have... No, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say... No, 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 no. I'm not trying to be funny about it. I'm being serious. Like, I know. Is there, like, as far as... Is there any reason why you would postulate that that the game would go in that direction. First of all, good vocab word. Second, um, <laughs> uh, just that it's, um, it, it feels very much like an adventure. And mm. the, the way that they handle lore is what, how I've kind of heard that they, they're going to handle it in Zelda U okay. where instead of it being presented to you, you kind of go and find it. Mm. You find it like on cave walls and things like that. That's where you're going to really find your story. It's Ooh. more or less been like that a lot. Like majority it has already been example. like that, yeah. Yeah, but I think that they they're purposely doing that as a focus now. They're trying yeah, to I... make the story as 
I guess not really far ta- detached from the gameplay, but more or less something not that you face. don't have to see. Yeah, to no, I, I actually think that would be super cool. I, you know, to to be honest, I wish Dark Souls did that a little, or the Souls series, so Bloodborne included, did it a little bit more. But I do love the idea of, you know, like you said, cave walls or something. If you were to go into a level and with no explanation at all, there was just like this huge mural of like, mm-hmm. like kind of like ancient drawings. What happened and here? Like yeah. no, Nobody explains it, but clearly you can kind of decipher a little bit, or or at least you think you okay, can. Okay, so there cause... was this race, and then they were having a good time, and then these other people. Yeah, came but in, then again, was... it's also like, well, who who wrote, who drew that? Yeah, that could that, this... that could be drawn from the the point of history from a different race or whatever. So you might be given the and idea, and then you get to the end and you find out it was all a big lie or something, and or just... that it was just a different, you know, that it was point of view. that you didn't see the whole picture, yeah. you just saw their their perspective. Yeah, I, I think. And I think a world like Zelda would be able to pull it off really, really well. Statues, Especially with, like, the, you know, the Triforce. Murals, and... Yeah, murals, statues, paintings, mm-hmm. um, you know. I mean, there was the tapestry in A Link Between Worlds. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, by the way, have you played A Link Between Worlds? Uh, no, I've seen it, though. Oh, you should play it. It's really good. If you, I think you like Link to the Past. I feel like you might. What's your favorite Zelda game? Um, oh, I really like Ocarina. Ooh. I'm well, sorry. I mean, it was nice the, talking to you, man. To be fair, though, to be fair, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I, I mean, my favorite, I think my favorite is going to be A Link to the Past, but um, I, the the last, the latest one I have replayed was um, Ocarina, and okay. I don't think I gave it a fair shot, because I played it in college, and to be fair, I don't remember a lot of college <laughs> um, and so when I played it, I was like, wow, I don't remember any of the, and then I was like, oh, I kind of remember that. He wears a tunic and has a sword? Yeah, no, I, oh. I remember playing it, um, mm-hmm. and I remember beating it in college. I just, honestly, when I went back and played it, I did not recall almost any of the game. So, weird. yeah, yeah. I have the same, ex- I have the opposite experience with Ocarina of Time, and like, I feel like I really haven't explored that game. And then I'll go back and play it, and I'll be like, I remember everything. This yeah, really well. Pet- I, I had chemical influences. Is mainly yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> For some of the, <laughs> I don't have a bad memory. I just <laughs> straight up. Yeah. I mean, you do there have you bad memory. I I might. <laughs> I might now because of college. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible decisions being made. Yeah, um, lots of them. Nah, that's fine. Um, to boy. step in on that topic for like one last thing, hmm. I like the idea of optional story or a story at my own pace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's awesome. I, I really appreciate Souls for that reason, and mm-hmm. I think it benefits all around from it. Well, and it's think... not even at your own pace. It ends up being interpretation as well. So it, it allows right. you to, yeah. I mean, some things are pretty set, kind of. But yeah, mm-hmm. it, it is not only at your own pace, but it's also kind of your own iteration of whatever it is. Which... So you can debate it with your friends and all that kind of right. stuff. And that kind of reminds me of like a time. It's it's funny because I Zelda U seems like the kind of game they want it to be that way. They want it to be something you kind of play casually with your friends and you talk to them about it. I think they want to try to, as much as they can, capture that sort of old, older, like, uh, feel of games where, you know, you used to, you played the game and you would be part of it and you'd get stuck on a part and you go and you talk to your friends and you ask them about what they, like, how they did it or if they played it at all and, like, if they got past it or you talk about, like, hey, I found this weird thing. What do you think it is? Because a lot of the Zelda community a lot of it is just basically debate over things that haven't been answered a lot of it is like these theories that have popped up from everywhere i'm sorry i'm not talking to my friends i'm just gonna get on the internet and look it up (laughs) i mean i mean uh well doesn't the mods conversation kind of tie into that if yeah yeah. if you find all these issues and you're like well obviously wouldn't be like you know modding to uh find how to beat a boss or something like that you wouldn't do that well you might do that but um with the idea of you know there's a flaw in the Who game needs to beat a with... boss with the sword if i have a machine gun exactly or a vehicle thanks gun. modding community but you can discuss with your friends like what kind of mod you're looking for what kind of mod you're looking to create if you're in one of those communities and directly address that yeah, yeah. No, i think it's i mean on the show we spend a lot of time talking about theories almost every week um but that's just and a theory don't don't do it. I didn't do anything. You know what you did. I do. <laughs> um, but... you caved really quick there. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. 
Yeah. I about. <laughs> We're not very strong here. <laughs> I've beaten them into submission. If you're wondering how I got put on this podcast an hour ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeff, do you want to do the podcast? Do I have a choice? No. Not really. He's not kidding when he says he beats us. <laughs> <laughs> Send help to this address below, 570. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, a lot of the time in the Zelda community, we ha- we spend most of the time debating on things that aren't really there. Um, and I think that's just something that you kind of have to, I guess it's just kind of part of the community. I think that's, it, and I think it's a, a strong part of the community. Um, the things that even are answered are kind of changed every so often. Every time a new game comes out, I know that, uh, Aonuma will come out and say like, this is the new lore. And it's like, but what about what you said last week? And he's like, I lied. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, you know, pers- it would make so, it would make a lot of sense to have lore in a game like because of zelda's just so many storylines and so many different pasts and whatnot Mm -hmm. it would actually make a lot of sense if you did just leave it like purposefully leave it open but you know what i mean like don't don't try to create some linear thing have your elements but allow like allow people to fill in the gaps yeah yeah invite them to do that and then leave it at that Mm -hmm. and i and i feel like then you're not then you don't have to hold up the responsibility of actually having this linear thing. You could if you wanted to have it in the background, but I feel like when they say, oh, this is the new lore, or this is the new lore, then what you're doing is you're pulling the rug out from people every single time. And they stop caring. They got to go back and like try to rework it into their psyche. It's called backwards rationalization, where it's Mm -hmm. like they now have to take this new information and try to make it apply to the old information. And Mm -hmm. it just, I don't, it seems counterintuitive. Just like, just create a world and open it up and, and, and throw some story elements in there and, and real story elements in there and real like, you know, yeah. um, like culture and, and whatever, and then allow right. the players to, to try to, you know, fill the gaps. I, I think if you want to create a conversation, if you want to create more fan lore and more um, in-depth, like, you know, obsession over that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, that's a great way to do it, I think. I think it's it's funny because a lot of the time anyway, the, the argument almost becomes... Um, I have this theory. I think this way, and someone's like, "Well, it's, they're gonna, they're gonna like, they haven't even said that that's part of the lore yet. They could exempt that like next week, and that that becomes like people are expecting them to just like veto certain parts of the story almost immediately, so they just disregard everything as information, and it kind of makes it hard to talk about a game when no one wants to actually listen to the, I guess, facts of the I mean, game. The, the overriding force is that the. F- even if fans hear a theory they don't like, they don't listen to it, including the theories yeah. that Nintendo puts forward. People don't like mm-hmm. some of the stuff that's in Hyrule Historia. A lot of right. people didn't like that Nintendo, quote unquote, ended the chic gender debate last year in like a very straightforward statement, um, uh, among other things. Or I, I know we had a debate on uh, what term it was. I think the quote should be around mask. the word debate. It wasn't really a debate. It was just people not understanding how things work. It, well, <laughs> yes, that's my st- that's pretty much my uh, uh, status on that too. But there's also like Majora's Mask, you know, what is Termina, even though it's in the instructions manual for the game. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's all the, like people are going to have their headcanon and that's okay. Like that just adds to what people come up with in terms of fan art and right. um, fan fiction and whatever makes them enjoy the series. Yeah. Right. I just want Metroid back. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you Metro- have... We have Metroidvania, kind of. Yeah, we have uh, Bloodstained coming out. Uh, That's not I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little concerned about this uh, Kickstarter video. Why? What about it got it's you? It's really weird and cheesy. Well, it's super weird and cheesy. <laughs> um, they don't show you Jack S H. That's what I was think. That's exactly what I was thinking when I. Well, besides for the cheesy stuff, that's exactly what, what I was thinking. Do- what they do show you, I don't, can one of you guys actually, you know, Jeff, Johnny Utah pointed this out to me. Mm-hmm. If you go and look at the one screenshot they show you, she's, I understand, she's in the <laughs> air, she's shooting that little dragon thing, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you take a look at that lion beast in the bottom left corner? I sure can. I want you to take a look at it, and I want you to describe to me <laughs> what you are looking at. It looks like it's like doing a handstand, kind of. Does it? Does it really? It kind of does, it looks... but two of its limbs are like to the I'm side. I'm sorry. And it they just... looks like a lion head with six legs coming out of it. 
It looks like a freaking and the lion head spider. They move it to the other, like, they they move, like, it's, it's the exact same piece. Yes, that's moved. correct. It's like, like they just copied and pasted it. This image looks like it took, like, a very short amount of time if they just smashed a bunch of concept art together. Why is that character even in the screen is my question. <laughs> because it just looks so bizarre and not it, in a good way. It's it like looks... you're trying to throw us into the world but in the wrong parts too quickly. I, like, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what they're saying with that <laughs> image. I don't understand what this is. It makes me mad. And no, it's not even like I don't understand, like change is bad it's like this looks stupid why is this here no i it I looks like a monster from adventure quest i mean on the bright side it only has <laughs> people have only pledged two million dollars to it so far oh so. my god Almost and they're asking two million for dollars. they're asking for five hundred thousand, right <laughs> yeah yeah they've they've gone a, a ways and you know what's interesting they're 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 using a new approach to kickstarters which i think the kickstarter uh exploding kittens used first which is backer re- not not backer reward tiers but like Backer achievements. Sorry for interrupting you, Jeff. Aww. But uh, it's that you have these like backer awards based on how many people back the game achievement wise and how many people like it and stuff. So like, uh, if we get uh, two hundred pieces of fan art, uh, you, we get you get there's gonna be an achievement that'll start unlocking uh backer items. Um, if we have a certain number of Twitter followers or retweets or Facebook likes, we're gonna start adding items or we're gonna start adding like unlocks. Uh, the reason Exploding Kitten- Kittens did it is because they were getting so much money that they really <laughs> couldn't add any Kickstarter goals to that list without feeling uncomfortable with it. Um, yeah. So they were just like, if more people pledge, one as thing that's to getting just me about more money um, gets pledged. One thing that's getting me about Bloodstained is that they have their Kickstarter, their stretch goals um, explicitly stated up to two, um, two million, uh, uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And there's still mm, nothing yeah. about a Wii U version. That's interesting. Um, like the 200 and tw- uh, that stretch goal is an 8-bit level. Yeah. That's the stretch goal, which is neat, but... I, I found mean... it interesting, like, the, the whole demeanor of it seemed very much like us against them. And I get it, like, maybe he is what, genuinely... What, in the video? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, they said no one would want to, or, they said no one want to play the game, <laughs> or whatever the f- or, excuse me, <laughs> what, whatever the heck he said. I'll it just was, censor it, it's fine. Yeah, about, you know what I mean? Like, he just seemed like very like, oh, no one would ever allow this game to exist, but I, I believe fans want to make this thing happen. And it's like, yes, yes, this is all great. But I didn't see anything. Mm-hmm. Anything in it besides the cheesiest of cheese ball. I was like, I I feel like if he spent less effort being in that expensive room with the paintings, drinking red wine, and in the armory down in the basement, <laughs> and actually had the concept guys kick out maybe just a couple other you know gameplay, just the a, just a three few pieces of gameplay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, there was the one gameplay thing, and then there was a bunch of character designs. Yeah. Right. And you can see it all on the page. Yeah, that's it. That's they didn't it. Do it the other they didn't have to. The other game that that actually the Banjo Kazooie guys, Yuka right? Yeah, ukulele. Yeah, that. I mean, that has a ton. That that already got way over their amount. But they have so much gameplay footage, oh my concept God. art, character they took, designs. They're like, we finished the basic game in like three months. Yeah, <laughs> they're already. No, kind no, no. Of- I have no doubt. That that is going to happen. I don't know. No, it's, if it's scary. Going to be it's scary how like much they did in essentially three months. And they had no problem boasting that, or not even boasting. He just dropped. Showed it, it. just like yeah. here. This is what we did. Dude, he, yeah, he dropped it like like he was just walking down the street and farted without you know. He didn't care. He didn't <laughs> oh, care. That was weird. No, little... no, 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 not weird at all. He didn't care. He was just like, hey guys. I mean, when he said it, he's like, oh yeah, we did this in three months, and uh, yeah, we could do a lot more with you know more money. It's like. You did yeah. this in three months? Yeah, it was like, this looks like a finished game. Yeah, they had a whole, like, ten minutes of just footage of gameplay This is Sonic stuff. Boom current yeah. state. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was, you know what? The backgrounds were better than Sonic Boom already. <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> already. It's so bad to say, but it's true. That can't be, that can't be our And the crazy our thing is that all the stretch goals for ukulele, amazing. 
Like yes. I was I was like curious, but now I'm really excited because it's like this game was supposed to be originally like a single player game that you know a lot of people wanted to play and like hang out and like talk about together. Now they've made modes that you can play with your friends. They've yeah. made games specifically for like four to eight two to four people. I think there's like eight games that are just for the uh four player modes. Yeah. Not to mention it's... an orchestral score. And a Which, concert yeah. for that arc orchestra. You know what's amazing? It was like that was their last stretch goal, too. It was like they they were like, if we get enough money, we're going to pay an entire orchestra to make our music. Like, yeah. that's that to me just says there's so much heart in it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they could... And the next one is all the DLC is free. Yeah, that's right. They're like, we just don't even need the money anymore. Just yeah, and it was very, it. it was very good. I mean, uh, someone in uh, either the Zelda Informer staff chat or the Gamnesia staff chat pointed out, it's sad that they had to say, after we've delivered a fully finished game, we'll make DLC. Oh, right. But that's mm-hmm. what they have to say nowadays. Right. Um, but they did yeah. specify that, and at the very least, I I think it's the same approach that uh, Yacht Club Games is taking with Shovel Knight, where they yeah. finish the yeah. game. And the DLC took a while because they didn't start the DLC. They didn't. They didn't done. like plan. Okay, hey, uh, Mick, I, I know you're working on that piece. That's going to be part of the DLC. Honestly, just so, seeing um, just seeing um, games like that, ukulele or or even Shovel Knight, definitely, they are the to me the shining beacons. They are the heroes, and what I believe should be the staple for what a Kickstarter game that gets you know millions or over a million dollars. You know, that when they deliver, the, the problem is there's so many games that get a million plus. I don't need to say them out loud. Everyone knows who these thieves, who these <laughs> lazy... Are you talking about Exploding Kittens? <laughs> No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Hey, okay. I'm not talking about Exploding they, Kittens. Just making, kids just have been quite, following us very not, well. Because I've heard yeah. some people, like, complain about that. And I just, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not talking about Exploding Kittens. I'm not talking about Yogg's Cast. I'm not talking about all oh, the people... <laughs> <laughs> who've taken the money and run, okay? I'm not talking about... Listen, I'm not talking about these people specifically, okay? I am talking in general. If they fall in that category, they do. It's not my call. If they... You, look, all I'm saying is... If they is, fall is, in that frequency. If you have taken... If you have taken an <laughs> absorbent amount of money and you did not deliver something or you delivered something that was very subpar... Okay, mm-hmm. and I don't need to say it I, again. <laughs> right? I, I could say it nine times, and I still wouldn't need to say it. But the 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 point being that there are games that do get created that you can tell, like they got the money and they kind of executed it, and it's like, eh, all right, well, wow, that kind of was mediocre. And but you can tell cares. when the game has heart. Absolutely, Shovel Knight. Um, I am not a, a nostalgia file. Okay, yeah. it's not like. Oh, I love Mega Man so much that when I play a game that even remotely looks like Mega Man, I will marry this game. I hate like... the original Mega Mans. They're so old and clunky. It bothers hey, me. Hey, I like Mega but, Man oh, too. Okay, that's no, too no, no, no. I still, I still like them. I'm but just putting out my opinion. I'm just saying I'm not well, going to throw money at anything that remotely looks like it. You of know course. What I mean? Yeah, no. But, cause that but can... Shovel Knight, did. I mean, they delivered. I mean, the, the mm-hmm. level design was really clever. Um, yes, there was a lot of mm-hmm. nods to the past. Yes, there was a lot of nostalgia, but at the same time, the battles felt new to me. They, they, there was a, there they was took a freshness advantage of the new it. coding. Also, oh, oh. they had Truffle King. I mean, <laughs> anything out like my biggest... you, watching that scene is magical. Okay, I'm sorry. That was actually my biggest beef with the game. What was <laughs> if, didn't if like I them? needed. No, if I needed some health potion, oh, yeah, I had to that sit was there for annoying. 15 minutes watching them dance. I was just like, oh, man, really? Thank you. And then it just kept going and going and going and going. I was like, okay, we're done. Can I can I just X out of it's this? It's funny because, like, that sort of thing, I, I you, you hear about that. And then I meet, like, I met Nick Waz a, a couple months ago, and he's going to be on the podcast in a few weeks for those of you who are interested, um, who is the art director of the game ser- of the Shovel Knight series. Mm-hmm. Which is serious, I get this at this point because it's... You know, they're hopefully. working on all the DLC. Yeah, hopefully more games. They said they're going to be talking about other things. Uh, but uh, I would love, you know, if they put the care and attention and the cleverness um, Nick, and the full fullness, if, like touching on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, even the music was great. We, when we had everybody over mm-hmm. around Pico Day, we had like 15 people in the house and we were playing uh, Shovel Knight. Um, you know, we would we would just go up to the loot dude, the bard guy, and we just throw in a couple tunes and everyone would be working. And we would just have this stuff on loop. 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it was it was just from Man. the music to the level of the design, the character design. There was an actual story. Like, yeah, it wasn't like the most mind boggling story. I kind of figured but it, it out. But it was about actually it. touching. It was it yeah, was no, simple it was, and it was, touching, which is amazing. It was. Boss battles, super fun. I mean, the mini bosses, original, all of them original, except mm-hmm. for, I guess they, like, reused the Griffin thing, whatever. But, you know, like, it was just so, I don't know, there was just so much attention. And, and if they do that with all of their games, I will be a lifelong fan of that company. Yeah. Absolutely. The it's thing the is same that, way I feel about FromSoft. The reason you know? that I, yeah. I mentioned yeah. meeting Nick is because, like, meeting him was, a, a, and Jeff was there, too. It was, it was a rewarding experience because he's, you can just feel how much he cares about this game and how much he loves working on it and like how excited he is to do more and like how much he wants to make these amazing games like it it shows in their game but it's like even in person you can you can tell that their passion is to make a good game and not to make a profit i hope yacht i i hope yacht club does kickstarter for every game <laughs> and I don't think they're ever going to have a problem with money. Oh no, I don't. I mean, th- these guys. I mean, they know how to do it. So yeah, they're, they're the, they were the pros that made a bunch of like really good games. Yeah, for and a long I mean time. the thing is, it's interesting because they have pedigree. They definitely do. Like the people on the Yacht Club Games team, they do. Um, you have to, to get on that team. I think you had to have a yes, good track record to be in. It, it, it was a good backing, like in terms of them going to Kickstarter. It was like these are the people we have. This is the experience we have. Um, to bring it right. back to Bloodstained. It's very interesting because it's pedigree, but with like this very big ego. And that was the yeah. big thing that came through in that video because it's just him. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, uh, Ega. And that one was man it. does not make a good game. You know what? That, that's the thing that I didn't mention because I didn't even think about it till you mentioned it, but it was in my mind. That, that, that is what bothered me. Who, I, I wanted to see the artist. I wanted to see the music guys. I wanted to see Cause the, the artist designers. I wanted to see, I wanted to see who, who is, who else, for all I know. They're all at the very bottom of that That's old concept art from another Castlevania thing, for all I, oh, they are. They're all at the very bottom in, like, all these little, like, Dracula costumes. It's kind of cute, but it's also like, well, I'd like to know more about what they're doing. Who they were. kind of bothered by Inafune. You know what's funny is that whoever did the little character portraits is, like, a caricature artist. So it's really weird. Yeah. But look, I'll, I'll I'll just sorry. I'll end the 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 bloodborn or sorry the bloodstained thing. I'll just say this: Symphony of the Night is easily one of my favorite games of all time. It, it, mm-hmm. I am a completionist by nature, and it's why I stopped playing video games for a good ten years. Mm-hmm. And it was because <laughs> when I played Symphony of the Night, I would get I I did not stop. Not just not just the whatever two hundred six point three percent whatever you could get. Um, it, I'm talking like I wanted to know every item that you could get from an enemy, generally two items each, right? Mm-hmm. So I would kill enemies again and again and again and again until I could get literally fill out that entire like, um, Pokedex of, uh, of enemies where it like tells you, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the, the, the items and stuff they dropped. Mm-hmm. But right. it, it was easily one of my favorite. What I loved also, um, the weapons that you could get like this knuckle weapon that could also do a Hadouken or you could oh, have yeah. this flame sword that could do a flame burst, but it didn't tell you they didn't. I mean, at least maybe in the, they remake, let you they kind made, of figure it out. Yeah, well, I didn't figure it out until by accident. And then the shield rod. Oh my gosh. Do you guys ever, <laughs> do you guys ever play Symphony of the Night? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the shield rod, if you have the shield rod, any shield that you have with the shield rod had its own like summon. Like you, really? Oh. Yeah, like, like you like summon this thing. So like the leather shield, like a big cow showed up, and I think like you got a little bit of health there. But then later on, you got the dark shield, and this big head like comes out of the ground with like all these like boulders, and it was easily one of the most OP things you could do with the shield rod. <laughs> but it was like every in the Medusa shield, um, all all the different shields with the shield rod had a summon that it did. Like, so like there was a cool screen. combination of weapons going on. Absolutely. And I just felt like it, it was a very, very full game. Mm-hmm. These guys, they say they want to realize the full potential of what that is. For me, playing Symphony of the Night with the dual castles, all those weapons, amazing music. In, in fact, today on Twitter, I just posted uh, Dance of Dance of the Pale or whatever it was mm-hmm. called. Castlevania's um, always had really solid music, in my opinion. Just like, yeah. probably one of the hot staples of the series. Love but it's cheers. just like... Yeah, and then all yeah, yep, and then also all the secrets that they they tend to have as well, mm-hmm. which is great. But it's like I don't know what this guy plans to do. He didn't say. All he said was that he wants to make a game and he wants to make it better. I I didn't hear what was better. What, what... a lot of it you have to read. You have to like really read into what he said. 
Okay, so he, they did post a lot of it because I just yeah, watched the like video. Yeah, they, like they basically they've said like you know uh, there's going to be an item crafting system. Uh, Miriam has like an extensive use of alchemy. They said co-op, right? Yeah, there's going to well. be co-op as well because of the backing levels and stuff. There's there, there's a lot of stuff, but a lot of it is in the writing. And it's kind of like you have to really look for it. I guess you have to really read into it. Um, but it no, wasn't in like the video. Be... Yeah, the yeah, video is where it should, it should be. There should be at least a brief oversight of like, hey, there's going to be this, this, and this in the in the and video. It still got all. Of that money. Because they just had uh, Igafune on it. Or, I have a question. Or, uh... um, now, I haven't kept up with it too much, but does it seem like it's more of a action game? It's, or does it's it seem like it's actually a Metroidvania? Definitely Metroidvania, but more yeah, yeah, towards okay. the newer ones, not the yeah, older ones. It's basically like okay. a newer version of of Symphony of the Night, essentially is what okay. it looks like. Okay. You know what's you know what's weird, and I'm sorry to keep on this, but like one of the backer levels is a seventy five thousand dollar one, or oh seventy God. seventy seven thousand five hundred. Sorry, seven thousand five hundred dollar, not seventy five thousand. Okay. Still, uh, seventy five hundred is still a lot of money. And you know what you get? You're right. A handmade sil- silver ring made by the game designer. <laughs> that was a weird one. Like the one where you get to he, spend a day with so, him. I understand, but he's a metallurgy. Met- yeah. Metal- metallurgist. metallurgist. Yeah. He can craft things with metal, and he makes games. Such a strange combination. See, I'm. I don't. It's so weird. It's weird. It's it's. If what, I had what, the what, money coming out of my butt, I'd do it. Yeah. What What are his credits? Castlevania. A, I thought he was a producer. He is the designer, and. Oh, he was. He okay. co-directed Symphony of the Night. That's confirmed. Yes. Yeah. That okay. is part well, of how they describe him. He's also the project lead. So that's that's his title. All right. Well, I don't know. That it's possible. Hopefully, I can't. I can't ho- really poop on that because I don't know. Hopefully, that, that he's the good. Well, he could be the bad half of Symphony of the Night. <laughs> possible. That's true. There could be a lot of guys involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the negative. Side. He was the one that everybody. He was the Ganondorf of the group. They were all like, "Dude, go away!" <laughs> every time, that's he, a terrible idea. Every what, time what you just offer something, <laughs> they would like be like, "Yeah, let's not do that." That was yeah. He's like, it's, "Hey, it's, I got an idea for an enemy. It's a lion with eight legs and it spins <laughs> around like a pinwheel." And they're like, "So, guys, no. I was playing Adventure Quest yesterday. Okay, we're gonna have these, <laughs> we're gonna have these enemies called Dark Nuts, and you're gonna have to stab them like a million times." I still like that. He's like. Hey guys, come over here. Check this out. Check this out. Well, what Look is it? These enemy designs. It's from Adventure Quest. Uh, <laughs> do you think we could do something like I, this? I mean, can we just can we, we just buy Adventure Quest? I got, can we can we talk to you for a second? I mean, like me and the guys were talking, and we think that you know, maybe maybe you should like chill on the design. Like we, we you know we, what? We, Fine. I'm gonna go make my own game. I'm gonna go to Kickstarter. Uh, Everyone's oh, gonna like my game better. Oh, oh, Everyone's gonna Iga, play my game. And Iga, come on, game. don't be okay. <laughs> guys, he left. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that was really cute. That was really cute. Um, well, I actually... look forward to my Adventure Quest 2 Kickstarter. Uh, but speaking <laughs> of projects... Wait, Adam, may... I had an idea I wanted to say. What did you want to say? I wanted to say, um, kind of bringing us back to the Zelda 2 discussion. Sorry? Zelda um, 2. Oh, How dare yeah. you? What if it was like... Um, what if instead of like an RPG, so to speak, because that's how I'm going to classify that, um, it yeah. was Metroidva- Metroidvania style? No, I think it'd no. be strange for Zelda. Don't. I feel like the the sword would not be a good is not a good weapon for that style of platform. Zelda has killed Metroid enough. Stop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they just like release. Can't take okay. it anymore, <laughs> Caleb. If you know what, I'm not going to say they couldn't pull it off, but I I feel like it would be, it would be, you know what? <sighs> yeah, I, I I'm not saying they couldn't do it. I'd like to believe that they can do it. I mean. Zelda has pulled the Zelda franchise has pulled off so many different genres well, mm-hmm. and in some cases amazingly. Yeah, the the idea of a Metroidvania Zelda, I don't think is impossible, but it would be, you know what, the, a remake of two would be the only thing that would even legitimately make remote sense. Well, it's the only one um, that's a side scroller like. Can that. you imagine? Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know how Captain Toad was originally a Zelda game. Was it really? Yeah, it was actually originally a Zelda game. Yeah, it was. Which is really strange. I mean, I can kind of see the puzzle elements of it, but I'm yeah, so but glad they went the way they did. It's the cutest thing. I haven't thing. played it, but it looks... I, I love the original feel of I, it. I know? love watching people play it. It's, it's a charming game. Yeah, no, it seems 100%. really, really cute, and it seems really well thought out. And the what they did was they, they created their own... Mm-hmm. You know, like it's not a Metroidvania, it's not a side scroll, it's not really a I mean it's kind of a platformer maybe, but 
it's like its own they just kind of created their own thing you know what i mean the cube world or whatever and i feel yeah. like it's i don't know like when you create that it fits within the style of the game that they were trying to base it off of well right and but, now you have free, it's hard to cl- it's hard to compare it to other games yeah. too once you create your own it reminds me of you know, fez thing. yeah a little bit a little bit yeah, yeah. it kind of reminds like, me a little bit of but like yeah that too like very vaguely of Catherine and a little bit of pushmo if you've heard of that I game played. I have not. from the eShop. It's like this little puzzly game. Um, but it actually reminds me a little bit of that. Yeah, it's a little bit like Fez, but without like the social justice attitude problem. <laughs> um, and the total like psychotic break. So yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a decent, uh, it's a decent comparison. Fez's sure. designer is the it's most Fez interesting game designer ever heard of. He also, I think we could do our own podcast on Phil Fish, so let's just not even get into it. (laughs) Phil. Phil. Anyway, but speaking about projects, uh, let's ask Mick, since you do a lot of things with Mm. your, with your tablet and your, your voice, Mm. tell us a little bit more about what you do, a little bit about Sleepy Cabin, I suppose, since, you know, we're on a podcast, we might as well talk about it. Oh, I don't want to bore you guys. We got a lot of Zelda news to cover here. Um, (laughs) I just... Really yeah, actually, quickly, just, I mean, to, just to make a quick comment yeah. on that, the thing that sucks, and I, 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 we've gotten some emails in about this, and someone is, I actually had a very healthy conversation. I almost threw off my laptop, just threw it off the table. Um, but we've had a lot of emails come in. People have been talking to me about how they they like the podcast, but they like it when we focus on Zelda stuff. Mm-hmm. And I've had to explain to them. It's like we would love to keep talking about Zelda news. We would love to keep talking no, about Zelda. The only problem is, is that a lot of the Zelda news is gone or is coming in the future. Since Nintendo decided to delay Zelda U, and a lot of you listeners out there um, understand this, that um, we don't really have anything to talk about. And it's, I know it oh, sounds... Oh, there's always something. I mean, there's there's stuff that, but a, lot of, a lot of it is <laughs> myself going out and finding a lot of theories and things like that, but a lot of the... I mean, when we when we're trying to talk, think of like theories and things that we should t- discuss, because a lot of the time we're not sure if we should discuss a theory because you know it's kind of dated or we've we've mentioned it before. But a lot of the time we kind of wait to see what the fans want us to talk about. So if you guys think that you uh, would like to help us figure out what we should be talking about more, uh, if you had theories that you want me to look at, if you want Jake to look into, if you want Caleb to look into, no, uh, <laughs> Caleb won't do it, but I will, and I'll make him do it. Um, Please send this to us at ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. That's ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. We really appreciate it when you guys send us your feedback and let us know what you think of the show. Or awesome um, theme songs like Brandon's. And awesome that's theme songs. literally the best thing we've ever gotten at this site from a fan. And if you can top that, then we'll that's, say your I name like, on this podcast. I feel like you're, t- you're not giving enough credit to Husky by the Geek because he did some oh, great work. Okay. And he was super receptive. I was actually going to go back to that because uh, Brandon sent that in before we got Husky's intro and outro, which is incredible um mm-hmm. but i always get a laugh out of brandon brandon's thing. a great dude he it's also so helped us for our uh reggie informer day he sent us a theme song for that episode oh which was uh did you not hear it yet i don't know it's the it's a theme song but we, they say reggie informer Aww. and they all say jake is their favorite at the end it's cute um Aww. hey guys post adam here i decided that you know we might as well show you what that theme song is because we never really use it anymore so uh, here's uh, the Reggie Informer theme song for the podcast. Reggie Informer Podcast. P.S. Jake is my favorite. Can we go back to Mick now? I want to hear Mick's stuff. No, no. It's just, I mean, it's just, it's cartoon. I've been doing a lot of commissions. <laughs> um, the Sleepy Cabin stuff. Mm-hmm. Now that the patron is starting to... Uh, really shape up and and things are starting to what is sleepy more cabin consistent. sleepy cabin is a conglomerate of artists and stuff uh it's me stamper um chris oni and g uh psychic pebbles spaz kid uh cory uh jeff when he wants to be around <laughs> uh niall's been helping out um quite a bit he's been a he's been a um a, a very helpful member um I mean, it's really just a, a group of guys who make things. It's funny because, um, like, I see your sleepy cab and, and I see, like, Studio Yada. And it's funny because, like, we don't really have this sort of thing called, like, an art circle in the in the, in the West. Uh, but I think you guys have reached, I guess, the closest thing to it. 
where you all you all kind of work together in the same environment and uh you, i don't know if you do this very often but i think you kind of collaborate on certain things or you plan on collaborating more yeah so that's the thing right now the the biggest issue is that chris and zach um they have a show called hellbenders and that is moving forward actually with yada Oh, okay. um That's... yeah so they're working together but that is now in full force there was a lot of contracts going back and forth the problem is is that the they're doing like a, a fairly long episode and um and uh, that's going to take up a considerable chunk of time. On top of that, Stamper has been working with Behemoth on uh, their newest game, Game Four. Uh, he was also—I don't know if anyone—if you don't know who Stamper is, you should. But he also <laughs> was the voice of Battle Block Theater um, and did the music, a lot of music yeah. for them. Um, and he was also involved in Castle Crashers as well. But he's working uh, with them right now. He's gone. He's in California working at the Behemoth right now. Oh. Um, so everyone, you know, and then Corey also, you know, he works with Shad, and, and he's also doing a game. He's actually doing a game with oh, really? Jeff, Johnny Utah. Yes, with I, I can't say much Kids, more about it. Please don't look at Chad. Is if you're over eighteen, go for it. I, I can't I have to I, ask though. Is it a porn game? No, it's not at all. No, okay. no, no. The game that he's working on isn't with Shad. He <laughs> he does commission stuff with Shad, but he's working oh, okay. currently with Jeff, Johnny Utah, okay. with Tom Fulp. Who oh, okay. is oh. also from Behemoth, uh, Alien Hominid, Castle Crashers, uh, Battle Block Theater, blah, blah, blah. And they're working on a game right now, those three. And it is, um, it is gorgeous. It is <laughs> that, I mean, Jeff, it, the combination of Jeff's like artistic direction plus Corey's like meticulous frame by frame animation and then just Tom, you know, in, in his like general <laughs> ideas kind of throwing them off into directions to go make stuff. Like it is, it is so wacky and so weird and beautiful <laughs> at the same time. They showed a little bit of it at uh, Pico Day, just kind of like a Newgrounds meetup. And I mean, I've seen it before, but man, it is just, it is so pretty. And and I can't, I can't really explain it. It you can right. tell that it's just such a. I feel like this game needs to get on Kickstarter or something like that. They have plenty to show, by the way. I mean, they have like ten bosses already, and like. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I think the issue is whether or not it's going to be a Behemoth game. But again, I can't really talk much right. about it because A, I don't right, know right. a lot about it. Um, yeah. But B, I was recently yeah. uh, talking to one of my friends who is a, a Smash Bros. competitive player. Eichel Man, he plays Ganondorf very well. Um, and he was talking about how he wants to go on this European trip. But it's it's expensive. It needs about like three grand. And um, one of the things he was like, I, he was like trying to sell off like a lot of stuff. Like his, he was even trying to sell off his own setup. Um, uh and I was talking to him about how, you know, like, he's like, uh, just like, you know, you should maybe you should go on, like, GoFundMe or Kickstarter or something, you know, try and get your your trip group funded and try to make it into, like, a work thing, you know, like, try to get something out of it. And he was very, he was very hesitant to do it. Um, but then, like, two days after I, I told him to do it, he, he, he messaged me and he was like, dude, I'm going on my trip now. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? He's like, I, I did what you said and I got, like, a thousand dollars already. And it, yeah. it's crazy because, like, a lot of the time I think that people are hesitant to do these sort of things. They're, like, worried about, like, seeming greedy or seeming like they're begging for money. Um, but that's Which is a very credible thing to be concerned about. Of there's, there's plenty of people that are going to, you know, poop all over you um, and call you out and try to, you know, try to pin you as that. Mm -hmm. um, and to be fair... There are those people who do. You know, for the most part, though, it's interesting because I feel like the people who call people out for these things like, oh, you're just stealing money, blah, 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 blah. They're either, A, not involved in any way in a creative capacity. So, like, in terms of, like, projects. They don't understand how a like, project works. Right. right. So, they're like, oh, you want money for this thing? You're just a thief, blah, blah, blah. And it's because they actually have no concept of how these things actually work or how much they don't know what a producer asking a producer it. for work. Well, is no, I mean, they go to work and they, you know, they go home and they watch their, no, no, I mean like they... a, like a producer, it's essentially the same thing. Kickstarter is just asking a bunch of people to be mini producers. Sure. In the same way that you'd go to like a movie. And, or producer. it ends up being, so it's either those people who have just no capacity and, or it's those people who would also, who would actually themselves use a system like that to take advantage of people. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the, you know, it's like uh, whoever smelt it, dealt it, uh, and, or whoever, <laughs> you know, whatever. It's the idea that they would, they'd call out people and be like, oh, you're just stealing money. Because the truth is, that's exactly what they would do. Right. And so, yeah. but but at the end of the day, what you end up getting 
is the people that are very supportive and and that small percentage and it's always a small percentage always ends up being so much more important for a number of reasons it has nothing to do with money Mm -hmm. it has everything to do with the fact that they are the actual like there's plenty of people that say like oh man i wish i could support you in some way it's like dude just by saying that like clearly you are supportive yeah like i don't need your money to know that you're being supportive the fact that you are just supportive is supportive the fact that you Um, say that you would you can see why someone else would want to give me money right and and even if you were like you know what i wouldn't do it i wouldn't do it but you know what i'm okay with other people doing it yeah if they said i like what you're doing you're worth it you know yeah and 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 it's just the idea uh, that versus the antithesis which is you're a hack thief Mm -hmm. uh who's uh conning a bunch of sheep into throwing their money at you so you can you know yeah just there's this very negative attitude but it's like clearly not one of those people do i give a shit about or uh it's not fine. one of those just people do i give a, a crud about <laughs> because these aren't these just aren't positive people who understand the notion of support or the idea of you know caring or understanding um you know how much effort goes into things and so I, I think in, um, you know, like in the case of your friend, you know, he can be weary. He can be fearful. You know, mm-hmm. Corey's the same way. We keep telling Corey because Corey, all, a lot of the sleepy cabin guys have serious money issues. And of course, you know, cause like you have this, like, it's, it's interesting because you have that, the YouTube debacle that happened with the, uh, minutes watch. Yeah. Formula. Things are, you know what? Things are getting better because of Patreon. Things are getting better because of some of the choices we made, which is focus <clears> less <throat> on just random masses and focus a lot more on the people on, that will support right you continuously well, it's not even just like oh let's focus on the people who you know will support us it's focus on the people that are that that we care about you know yeah. and it ends up being them but it's a lot less about like hey let's try to create support it's a lot more just like well there is support there already is it's let's just focus on them now instead of like going to like a in the middle of public and screaming about like who wants to play video games going to like a card shop and talking to people there well we don't really talk about our patreon that much i mean we 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 don't i don't even know how often we plug it to be honest um you should plug it here plug it well no we're definitely going to be (laughs) we're definitely going to be making update videos at some point but it will be one each and that will be it Mm -hmm. it's not like we sit around trying to like inundate people with our patreon we just figure that the people who know us and who like our work will either hear about it eventually or look into it or, you know, what? it's just like, if it happens, it happens. But there's already a support system. We already have an audience. Yeah. So it's not about, like, you know, trying to go out and just grab strangers and get their money. Yeah. It's more about, like, hey, these are the people who clearly like our stuff. We'd like to make more of it. Do you want to be a part of that is basically it. Right. Um, um, I actually have so uh, every... two things about that. Um, uh, Mick, uh, do you have more you want to say on that? Or... Cause I, no, no, I don't no. I was going to say, you. in terms of your... Not at all. I was going to say about your friend that I'm glad he made that choice. Yeah. I think and actually, the reason a... why I talk about it the way I do is because a lot of people have had a big hang up about it mm-hmm. because they fear what, you know, the general masses are going to say about yeah. it. And what I'm trying to say is F them because... And you know what? As a result, he found things that he liked because of it. Like he found out ways he could do this in a way that was enjoyable like uh he's making a travel log of his of his entire journey he's going to be like writing a guide on what like basically where to go what to look for when you're going to these countries and you play competitive smash brothers and that's amazing right. like yeah. that's really helpful to the community and not only that he's and like hell, if i can sorry yeah. if i can be the first one to add i would gladly throw a hundred dollars at Corey's game i want to do it right now <laughs> oh so well I'll, he should do it i would love to show i think there's a few gifts that got leaked i think tom even le- leaked them but then like when Jeff mentioned the name of the game. It was like kind of a problem. So I don't, I don't really know what the, the thing is. If there's... But I, I promise right. you, I play a lot of games <laughs> and it mm-hmm. is gorgeous. Oh, it, I have faith in all of you. It guys. is I'm goofy usually, and usually weird invested. and mm-hmm. freaking beautiful. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was, I know I went on a long time about it, but I only do it because I feel oh, like so good. many people have been, a, you know, afraid, like they've been kind of intimidated by people and, and the general rabble. Not to, not to ever go that route, you know, and and yeah. I think that don't that you sell end up out, with, man. Well, no, it, exactly, and and well, there is selling out. There absolutely is selling of out. But then there's also like, hey, I need to be able I, to eat. Well, yeah, I mean, I I personally look, I, I I can sit here and say like crowd support's great, but then I also, you know, 
behind closed doors or on this podcast would say, I, I don't like it that I've seen um, certain Let's Players who already make a lot of money just being a Let's Player on YouTube um, and right. also on Twitch <laughs> and then also then have a, a Patreon. Like that, like that, that, that damn Oni and G. <laughs> he, he doesn't do that. You I know. I'm just kidding. No, but th- there are some people. It's like, dude, how many ways can you be taking money from people for playing video games? So you already have subscribed. And look, again, I'm not. I shouldn't be judging, but I do. It, it's <laughs> it's not my place to judge those people, but I I will I will. Um, you know, if you're already getting money from so many different sources, and then on top of that, you know, it's like pay me money so I can play more games. I get it. You know, it's a source of entertainment for people, um, and who am I to judge what someone's source of entertainment is? Some people like to get whipped on the butt. Some people, <laughs> you know... Some people like some, to play Zelda 2. Some people like to play Zelda 2. <laughs> um, I have my opinions about Zelda 2, but I'm not going to tell someone like Nate that he's wrong. Um, <laughs> Again? I, I, <laughs> right. I mean, I, I think... I, I personally think it's terrible, but... You know, some people like to eat Vegemite, so you know it's a <laughs> it's a thing. It's a personal taste thing. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's that's the end of of that whole thing. I've had a couple of drinks just so you no, know. that's fine. Oh, you during the good. duration of I remember our call, we've yeah. had uh, we had on Cole, and I it was we had video on I think for him, and it was interesting because we just like watched him drink beer after beer. It was kind of like this is almost like interesting to just watch and see how far he goes <laughs> did you did you notice a, a considerable noticeable decline of um comprehensibility from him not really. not really he's a he's a ufc fighter oh there you go yeah my two things on uh everything that mick was just talking about um one um one thing that i really like about patreon is that the initial suggestion is just a dollar a month which is mm-hmm. a ridiculously low amount to dedicate but it's still you're supporting that person and that's mm-hmm. amazing so that you know you, you say that but that. you know any 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 dollar amount the fact that someone goes from viewer like voyeur viewer fan to actually pulling out their credit card putting in the number and dedicating a certain amount of money that they make uh, or to you mm-hmm. to you even if it's one dollar that is that step is huge. The gap between I watched a YouTube video and I enjoy these videos or I like Sleepy Cabin Podcast or I like the Zelda Informer Podcast and now I want to I want to give it money. That 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 is a huge leap. I mean, yeah, it's just pulling out your wallet and entering some numbers. But, but the, the thought process and the decision to do that is so huge. And that tells you so much about the person mm-hmm. who's, who's doing that, I think. It's funny because like... I've mentioned this before in the podcast, how like even getting an email from any single person Absolutely. on the podcast, yeah. it like it blows yeah. me away. I feel amazing. I'm off the wall. Yeah. I yeah. jump and I tell Jeff about it. And related <laughs> to that, like just recently, like uh, this past week, I've been on a kick for this one YouTube artist, uh, Shoko G. I'm pronouncing his name wrong, but he's he's he runs this channel called Kazood and he does kazoo mm. covers of video game music and it's cool. way better than it sounds <laughs> i know that jack it yeah, sounds that. cool it's amazing anyway <laughs> um but i just realized like i've been talking to um colin from over at gamnesia about like how to Gamnesia. support like various uh youtube uh artists and our the stuff we put off in the sites and whatnot and i realized like i hardly ever like videos on youtube and i'm like what am i doing Mm-hmm. I'm, you can mm-hmm. it's so simple to just click and i like this this is a good video and yeah. if every single person who watched a video and enjoyed it actually did that like and and subscribed which would be cool too um that would be a huge impact in itself sure yeah absolutely um, it's funny anyway. it's the first thing people say like comment and subscribe and yeah. it's usually the most overlooked thing people will comment and subscribe way before they ever click that like button yeah Oh, yeah, people like to say, yeah, people will like, you know, but it's interesting because, yes, while that is extremely awesome that people do that um, and it is very helpful, it's interesting when people, when the when the viewers start thinking of it as like a currency. Like, I've gotten comments like, if you make a video like this again, I'm never going to comment on your videos again. It's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, look, I, I just made this because I thought you'd enjoy it. Um, who are you? It, it's not like, <laughs> I don't know oh, you, but... Oh, no, and yeah, and it's not like who are you? Like, 
oh, I'm this big thing. Who are you? It's more like, no, literally. I don't know like, you. If I saw you on the street and, like, I, I never made a YouTube video in my life, who are you? Like, I... I don't know who you are. I don't know why you dislike this video. I don't know what you liked about it. I don't know you don't how even to fix have, it. <laughs> you don't have to like the video. Just I don't understand why you feel like it's your job to tell me. Like if I'm at a store or something and somebody comes up to me and tells me they don't like my pants. It's like, who are you? <laughs> I mean, I, Mick, we what, need to talk about are, your pants. Yeah, <laughs> I I have jeans that I literally shredded so I could like wear them as shorts. You're wearing jeans? Cause... For some reason, I thought you were wearing sweatpants because you're always wearing sweatpants, it seems like. Um, I was wearing sweatpants and I switched over to jean shorts. They're not actual jean shorts. They're jeans that I cut off to make. Are they short shorts? They're not that short, no. I'm not like that. They're still classic. Gotta make like them shorter. Mm -mm, mm -mm. A little bit of a limit on how uh, long <laughs> shorts can be. You're a dirty boy, no. <laughs> uh, the last thing going. I wanted to uh, interject about that <laughs> is uh, or about the idea of um, whether artists can look for support and where do they go for that and like people's negative views on that. There's a fantastic... Mm ted talk called the art of asking and mm. it's just all about the idea of there's a lot of people who look at artists who ask for support uh whether it's through kickstarter or through like any sort of um they did a whole ted adventure. talk about it oh it's a fantastic ted talk it's about that's 13 great minutes. yeah it's nice. and it's it's super popular like if you search up ted talks and you search i i don't know it, it's got like it's over the 75th crazy. video <laughs> Super there's popular. a lot of TED, yeah. Well, there's yeah. a lot of TED talks. I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, there are. Um, but anyway, it's really great. Um, it's just all about the. It, it's it starts with the idea of street performance, and the idea right. that when because uh, the the person who's talking actually was a street performer for a time, and you literally put out your hand, and if someone wants to give you money, they give you money. They connect with right. you. They say thank you. They say something about your work, and then they go on, and. There are other people who just look at you and yell at you and say, like, you know, get a real job, that kind of thing. But right. those aren't the people who come up to you and and actually give something to you, look you in the eye and say, thank you, or I appreciate right. that, or that's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, yeah, definitely check yes. that video out. It's amazing. It kind of it, – it, if it doesn't change your mind about what your, your thoughts are on that situation, it will at least make you question it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's a great I think it's great that people take the time to educate people about it because I feel like a big part of it is education. The idea that people, you know, the internet allows people free content. Your podcast, uh inter, you know, yeah, YouTube I, videos. I that, put take money out of my own pocket to make this thing. Right. There's there's the free content everywhere. And and because of that, I think people believe that content is free and should be free. And it's their God-given yeah. right to have this free content. And if you ask for money, then you're greedy. And if you're not making stuff, you're lazy. Yeah. So you're really kind of stuck in this spot of like, well, I I need to eat and this is costing me money to make. And it takes um, time out of the very well, few hours. Right. So, well, no, but then day. everyone says, well, you know, you should do it because you enjoy doing it. Well, of course I enjoy doing it, but I also have some bills. I enjoy... You know, for the most part... The people who complain don't have bills to pay and or don't know how right. long it takes to make stuff. So yeah. I just chalk it up. I very rarely – I used to get angry about it when I was starting out. But the longer I've been in this game, the longer I've learned that yeah. – the more I've learned that, you know, honestly, these people, you can't get angry at them. They're just idiots. Or, you know what? Sorry. They're not <laughs> – you know what? They're not idiots. They are – they're they're uninformed. Naive. Yeah. They're uninformed and so, you know, so be it, you know, that – that that's it, who they are. Just let it roll off your you, back. You mentioned how you've been in this a long time. Does it feel like it's? I mean, I, I think if I spoke, I said to a any, long time, but it hasn't been that long. I mean, to be if I think if I spoke to anyone about this sort of thing, I think they would agree that you are you've become one of the more patriarchal figures in, I guess, the animation online field, uh, the online content field of sorts. Uh, Maybe. Yeah, I think. Uh, does it? And I, I'm I'm sure you get a lot of uh, questions from artists and animators. Who are just starting out, and they like what? What do you? Th what is the most common question you tend to get asked from these people? And like, how how do you how do you make a living? And and how do you um, start? And I love the how do you make a living one because the answer is you don't. And <laughs> um, how do you start is equally entertaining only because there is no kind of paint by the numbers way to do it. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it, but I will say though that. Um, granted, while I'm not making a living from any of this, 
uh, yet. Um, YouTube was kind of what I think a lot of people initially thought was going to be the the game changer. Mm-hmm. And um, it almost was. Know, back, it was. It was for a chunk of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, for about two years, it was very promising, um, like mind blowingly promising. And then for a year following, it was still promising. And then it just kind of slid off the scale for a lot of. Um, kind of uh, like animators and, and longer and, work time for less like mm-hmm. quality over quantity essentially right right so um, and then which sounds you know, insulting to say about people who put out videos all the time well no it's, it's true just... I mean there's no I, I've never met I'll be honest I've never met a let's player um, that I actually talked to I, and I talked to a lot of let's players I'm friends with a lot of let's players and, and uh, vloggers and I've never met a single one of them that has ever said, you know, what I do is harder than what you do. Right. And I, and so I appreciate that. Because if I ever did, I would punch them in the face. <laughs> um, that or I just, or I just laugh really, really hard. Like, like ironically hard in their face. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, they understand. But you know what? At the same time, it's not like there's, you're going to get a pity case. That's the way the model works. Mm -hmm. And they happen to be good at what they do. Um, They're comfortable doing what they do. And it's difficult to do what they do, but I guess it's it's kind of like, I guess, an unfair comparison, even to like. Yeah, they're very different things all all together. Like Jax Films, um, Brock Baker. Yeah. uh, You know, these guys. You can't compare like writing novels to working in a coal mine. No, but. These guys, though, are super supportive. They, they yeah. hire animators when they can. Yeah, that's what um, I love, is that they kind of, like, are the... I guess the fix to the problem is that they, they're kind of putting the money that they're getting that they can that they can afford back into that group that was kind of left Yeah, behind. and even if the money isn't there, the support's there. I yeah. mean, when they see something cool, you know, like, I'm not expecting them to, like, oh, well, you know, if you're making X dollars, we're... Why don't you share the wealth, asshole? It's like, yeah. no, that, that's their thing. They, they figured it out. They got it. They got their audience. They're doing what they do. They work hard. They, they but it's nice when they do. type of content. But yes, I would say overall what's great is that they're not afraid to, um, you know, share attention with artists. They're not afraid to patron artists. They're not afraid to commission artists. It's and, not a competitive and field. It's more a, so, right. it's like a self-helping group. Yeah, because there are certain circles of people who basically just play Minecraft and they believe in some capacity that they are somehow like that, that they are like bizarrely skilled at something. I don't, I don't know. Like, they, they, <laughs> like it's not even like they're making all the cool Minecraft shit too. I, and I don't need to name anybody, but it, it's just interesting that there are certain people and there's lots of people who play Minecraft who are not that I'm, I'm not saying that I'm just saying like there are certain pockets of people in the let's play vlog arena that have I don't know if it's like a weird justification of what they're doing, um, like in order to feel okay about mm-hmm. it or like a, a you know a pride because otherwise what do you say at a, a party or, or what do you say when you when you meet someone's parents like oh yeah I play Minecraft you know it's like oh <laughs> oh well I make a lot of money though it's like oh okay <laughs> you make it's a like, lot of money doing something that is essentially like seen well, the equivalent as like selling drugs <laughs> yeah like... you could i mean yeah this one's legal but yeah but it's yeah. shameful it's... it's like who's who's your who, who's your audience what what are you really making what are you really doing and what by would the you way do if the internet like disappeared you know you know what skill set do you, do you bring to the table it's i'm sorry to like interrupt but like no that not minecraft all. thing is it just me or is every video for minecraft the thumbnail is always the same it's like three or four like characters, and they're all just like staring at the. Ca- it's like one of those like old like '90s rapper CDs mixtapes or whatever. I see. What you're just saying. like they're all like staring at the camera. One of them may be hunched over or something, and it's like at a weird camera angle. It was like, don't give me cancer. What is this? Is this supposed to like make me want to watch it? It's just weird and uncomfortable. But it does. It makes it makes the target demographic want to watch it, yeah. and that target demographic is like ten know, year olds. Tw- yeah, ten to ten to thirteen year olds. I recently heard someone say that ten year olds don't really watch cartoons anymore. No, I don't remember hearing some of that. They don't. It's they don't really watch cartoons anymore. It's more they play more Minecraft than anything, and that cartoons nowadays seem to cater more towards kids in high school or people that are old enough to have watched older cartoons, which did appeal to them as kids. Yeah, I think it's. I that doesn't sound wrong to me. I think a cartoon. I mean, I think they can appreciate a cartoon for what it is, but mm-hmm. I've even seen like the attention span. Has gotten so short that even something like a cartoon, 
unless it's just constantly wacky or super popular. That's the other thing. Kids love popular things. Yeah, it's they really love the bizarre. trends. We have a weird yeah. trend obsession going on now. You know, they talk about how kids are actually very honest about things. Like, you know, uh, if they, you know, they're just like op- like overtly honest, and they don't see a, a shame in telling you exactly what they feel. Right, exactly. But at the same time, they are highly susceptible to trends and mm-hmm. highly susceptible to fads. So it's a weird balance. So like, they are super honest about things, but at the same time, when you ask them if they like this video, if everyone in their school likes it, their answer is yes. Yeah. So it's not even, it's like, well, I you mean, know, it's kind so it's of a, a social pressure. I remember even as a kid, I was dealing with the same thing where it's like, you had to like, I, I mean, I, you can ask Jeff, musical theater in high school is the exact same way. It's just like, you have to fit in or else you get spit out. I spent most of my senior year by myself because I didn't agree with what the theater kids were doing. I didn't agree with Aww. how they felt. No, it's Aww. true. Ask them. <laughs> Jeff, you were busy off doing exams the for the cast. most part. I was, I was sort of there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Jeff and I went to high school together, and we did musical theater and those sort of things. And Mick, you you had a background games. in theater, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you did, uh, what was your uh, degree in college? Uh, acting. Yeah. I got a BFA in performance arts from NYU. Oh. Nice. Fancy. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I, got, I got a quarter million dollar degree from a school uh, essentially i got a degree in back rubs and make believe and um... i hate that i hate that about theater like half the time you're spending it like let's do like a, a warm up massage and it's like i don't want to touch that dude would have been nice if uh, part of part of that uh quarter million dollars went to like actual you know getting a job or some kind of placement that's the thing like I, i'm only going to say this and then i'll, I'll be done i, I don't want to bore people with this the thing about it, um, in London, because I went to RADA as well, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London. Oh, wow. And and the way they do their, their system Don't just throw is that out there. That is actually a very impressive thing to do. It was, it was through NYU. Um, it's still impressive. Th- there was like, yeah, there was like 14 of us that went out there, and it was it was a pretty fun year. But uh, anyways, so yeah, for theater geeks who like Shakespeare. Um, <laughs> but the thing was is that in London, or at least uh, in it, where we were, they only release as many or graduate as many people as the industry kind of needs. Oh my so god. So you don't run into this situation where in New York every everyone wanted at least when I was there everyone wanted to be an actor um and I'm sure it's still that way to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um and obviously in LA it's that as well. But everyone wanted to be an actor so these schools would just graduate class after class after class hundreds thousands i mean the city was just pumping out actors and the actual ratio of people who had work was so minuscule it was in the hundredth of a percent and not only that then you times that times the uh uh how many people were actually in the union and i was in the union at the time but even within the union like uh the aea at Mm -hmm. the time i guess they merged it with sag but um even then, the percentage was so, so tiny. It was not a full percent, yeah. not even close to a full percent. And in order to get any of the benefits that you pay for regularly through your dues, you have to work at least like 18 weeks or whatever it was in order to get any of the benefits And that's for difficult to get in this sort of – it's funny because like I was talking to a friend about the, the Japanese game market versus the American. And yeah. in a lot of media – uh, because I watched this series called Game Center, which it's a show that started in 2003 in Japan, and it's essentially the first Let's Play series. They've played ga- they've played everything. They've had like 16 seasons at this point, and they're usually a little bit shorter, so that's how they're able to fit in over the past couple of years. Um, they play things like Link to the Past, Mega Man, all these sort of things, uh, and they have these assistant directors who come on the show regularly. And my friends like every season the assistant directors change. And I'm like, why is that? Why do they not have a consistent crew? And it's like the studio hires the crew who then go to different sets to work on these films. And I'm like, so they work for the studio for a longer period of time. He's like, yeah, that's the case. Whereas in the U.S., you get hired for a project, and then as soon as it's done, you no longer have that job. In Japan, a lot of game companies, they'll hire an employee to work there for a period of time on certain games. Here in the U.S., we've adopted more of a uh, temporary basis model. Contractor basis. Yeah, Yeah. and it's it's, it kind of sucks here. I mean, there's more opportunity but at the same time, you're more likely to not have a job most of the time. Well, I think that's why you're starting to see so many of these guys do Kickstarter games. Mm-hmm. And it's actually the same reason why, you know, I, I feel more confident with 
working with the Sleepy Cabin guys than I do trying to go out and get a quote-unquote safe animation job. Studios are dropping people left and right, whether it's animation or video game. I mean, you look at Konami right now, you look at um, with video games, and and then you take a look at like Pixar or, or Disney or um, DreamWorks who have periodically been having these huge layoffs of their animation departments. And when I was asked... You know why don't why don't you just get a safe animation job somewhere? First of all, I don't think I, I I don't have a background in animation. I do it now, and I love doing it. Mm -hmm. But I've seen people who can animate. I have friends that can animate, and I mm -hmm. I may be a concept guy to a degree, and yes, I can execute to a degree. But I don't trust my skill set in in a professional setting like mm -hmm. that, like that. You don't you know, feel like, like you'd be comfortable being like told to do a certain thing and then doing right, it. Right, exactly. If if people want to hire me for concept stuff, if people like what I've produced and then trust me to be able to execute something, whether I hire my friends who I think are awesome, mm -hmm. um, and, and to execute a vision, yes, I'm definitely comfortable with that. But you put me on the line with everybody else, with the 500 other Koreans out there, I'm gonna be <laughs> literally wait. I'm gonna be the Ganondorf in the back. Nobody's gonna want to <laughs> hang out with me. You're gonna be bottom. <laughs> Tier. you're really I'm good at what you tier. do but like you're specialized right <laughs> and so it's just interesting that like um as far as you know these safe jobs it was like there are no safe jobs like someone someone telling me to go and get like this safe animation job it's like do you you don't understand the climate right now if anything is safe right now it's doing your own thing it's doing your independent thing studios connect, right independent connect with your audience personally mm -hmm. give Give what you know these people want. Don't have the 12 Fox execs at the top saying, yeah, Border Town's a good idea. No, you, you, you get the, the people down at the ground level who know the fans, who love the stuff. Exactly. Uh, and, and then create something that you enjoy, that you know they will enjoy, and listen to them while you're making it. And that is what I think all these independent studios mm -hmm. who do it right, like Shovel Knight and like um, – yeah. um, Freaking uh, uh, ukulele, Skull Girls, yeah, ukulele, Mighty Number Skull Nine, Girls. Um, you know, th there are certain companies that listen to the people. They do what they, you know, and then with the animation stuff as well, smaller animation groups who then go out listen to the fans. And it's not just like you're a slave to your fans. It's you want to give them stuff that they don't even know about. Like you know, they they're going to love you. it, right? There's exactly. They're trust just going to trust you. They're forms. not just right. They're not giving you orders. So they're they're the ones saying, hey, listen. Here's some money, or here's my support. And here's some things that I might be interested in you doing more of. Right, I, I know what you've cooked in the past. I'm going to let the chef decide. You guys cook something amazing. It's like, all right, you close your eyes because this is going to be a buffet in your face. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I think that that is a, a much more I, – I am bummed out to hear about um, Kojima – I am bummed out to hear about, you know, these studios laying off people. Mm -hmm. But I think what it is doing is kind of letting people know. Creating a new you know, environment. Right. There's two ways you're going to go. You're going to go the corporate, hey, we got our bottom line to fill. And then you're going to have the independent artists who are going to create their thing. And I think we've seen from the ukuleles and even the blood stain. What's it blood, called? Blood, uh, blood. Blood stain. Blood stain. Is that what it's blood stain? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that. Fans are there. Support is mm -hmm. there, and you don't need it's to a, have. It's a dream that people that have had there. since the beginning of these sort of like since the beginning of animation, since like music in the seventies and things. Right, like, and like, it seems the, more feasible than ever. Oh yeah, I'm totally. Saying. Because yeah. there's such an easy way to connect with people. It's so easy for people to give you their support, whether it be monetary or through vo vocal support, and for yeah. them to spread the word about you. Um, it kind of reminds me because you were saying like the animation field right now is very unstable in studio like steven universe and uh gravity falls which are two of the more successful like almost crazed fandoms mm -hmm. uh like would that would probably be i guess cartoon network's bigger hits mm -hmm. or no cartoon network and disney because they're two different channels. Uh, but they've been yeah, uh cartoon they've network been delayed is, yeah. they're on they're on hiatus Fi because of financial reasons i don't know there's just they're just on hiatus and what that means is that those those animators are out of a job Right. Completely. They don't have anything that they can be doing. And it's it's strange because like you imagine that that would be a, a you you would imagine that would be the job that would be would be stable, but it isn't right now. And it, it and it hasn't but been But then and then if you look at it, if you said, you know what, if Gravity Falls was uh crowdfunded, that okay. they would probably be making more money and that oh, yeah. there would be no there would be no hiccups in terms of their delivery. Yeah. Like there there would be so much money going to that mm -hmm. um that the actual creators would be pocketing and not the networks. It's funny because I I looked at a 
Bravest Warriors and Adventure Time. It's by the same creator. And I yeah. really love what he does with Bravest Warriors. I do not like Adventure Time at all. Because you talking about Pendleton Ward? I think so. Because he didn't really create Bravest Warriors. Oh, I thought he did. He's 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 well I don't I don't know exactly what his involvement was per se, but I know he he was more of like the front he's you know what I mean? Like he was he's definitely a part of it. I think he was an executive producer and he executive also Executive producer think, means like nothing. <laughs> well no, and I think it's he did honor. character designs oh, okay. and stuff like that. I, I I do think he was involved, but he, I don't believe like he was as heavily involved. I oh, okay. do believe that they just kind of threw Pendleton Ward's name along with it. Right. Kind right. of like a set. I, I, I don't want to, this sounds terrible. This is a terrible analogy, but like <laughs> a Seth MacFarlane on Borderlands, like, or Border Town, like the, the idea that, uh, a big you know, name a on people... something that is not necessarily made by them, but he kind of right, gives his backing to of... it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and I think it's more than just money. I, I do think. He no, no, no. It's often, it's often like, I will support this and put my like public support behind this and so it'll yeah. be like all right executive producer credit because so sorry i interrupted what what did you notice about that um show? i was gonna make a comparison it still kind of works but it would work better if i had known that in advance um but essentially that i look at these two shows and i can and it's like you see adventure time which is a show that is produced by cartoon network it's owned i guess by the studio to an extent uh it's and it's i feel like it's so limited because it tries to be this thing it's very adult in its content content and hmm. its hidden and its hidden meanings um but i feel like instead of using that as kind of an advantage it, it kind of limits the show's potential and it makes it something that is almost unbearable to watch for me because it feels like it's stifled whereas with bravest warriors it just kind of feels like everything's out there and it's allowed to be itself and i like that and i think that's kind of a big thing is that like because we have such an an a, a landscape that allows you to be yourself and allows you to make even your own company i mean rooster teeth was built by people that just wanted to make their own content yeah, but are you saying that you think that those the reason why that show is that way is because is it the of studio executives? Thing? I don't think so. I think that I think those types of messages come from I think those come from a creative standpoint. I don't think the networks give a sh or give a crud about um yeah, I don't I don't think the studios give a crud about that kind of stuff. If anything, if you're getting a sense of um some kind of morality uh you know, stint or some kind of like a mature whatever, I'm I'm going to guess that has less to do with the studio and more to do with um, the actual creators, personally. Personally, yeah, I, I, I don't agree. I don't know if that's true, but that's mm -hmm. what I, I I think they I think studios probably want a little less of that and probably want a well, little I think, bit more. Well, I think no, I mean like it's usually balls. more they're looking for something that's more marketable and less like. Right, but that's the thing. Niche. That adult messaging is not marketable. Yeah, so like, they kind of they, they if anything they would be more against it. That's what I'm saying. Right. Is that oh, like okay. they might be like saying like, hey, we looked at the script for the next like season and we don't like this joke because it's too it's not it's not good enough or like we don't like the story it's it's too mature it's too dark too heavy and i mean they have had some darker episodes they had a whole episode that was like a prequel that was like an apocalypse thing as far as i can right i mean it is on cartoon network they do have to limit what exactly they yeah. but like with animation uh, independently you can do whatever you want you don't have to like sure. limit yourself and i mean through limitations there comes uh brilliance but at the same time it's it's sad to see that that is like the I'm case opposite of you i i still yeah. prefer adventure time because it has more of a, a structure and like what it's trying like the uh story right right because bravest warriors jumps well i i haven't watched case. i'm not gonna lie well, i that's haven't the whole watched point. much it's like one of them is mostly it's supposed to be this kind of episodic you know you, right. you can tune in any time and watch for three minutes on your iphone and it doesn't really matter right. and then you have the linear kind of storyline that's being told yeah. with uh, adventure time yeah, they're not really comparable. It's just taste. I guess yeah. which one you prefer. I, I, I enjoy both of them. I, I, I think they both because it's really good. I haven't seen it. It's cute. It's cute. I I think it tries. It's a, a cute too show. Hard, it's honest. got good references and things like. It's got good references. It, um, you... Some of the some of the stories are give some. Yeah. What? Uh, I was gonna ask oh. Mick as an animator, yeah. if Nintendo were to talk to you today and said, "We want you to make a Legend of Zelda series." And I'm assuming you you know about the original show, sure. Possibly have seen it. I know some people haven't. Um, what would be one of the first things? That, like, I mean, there's there's the like the the fact that Link talks and like the, the would there be anything that you would make sure that would be involved or like completely like just swept under the rug, um, if you were given control of a Legend of Zelda animated series? Because we we know that Netflix is working on something. We know that. Uh, Sony has offered a, has offered bids for it. We, we know that people are wanting to make 
it happen. So what do you think? The number one the number one thing I would do is I would not set it in any particular world. I would not set it in any pre existing world of Zelda. Okay. Good. Because right off the bat, you're effed. If you do that. <laughs> every because no, because you have there's a certain amount of expectation. Like we said before, everyone has their interpretations, especially of the Zelda world and the timeline. Um if you were to go and try to if you were to try to work with anything that already pre existed in terms of like set, you know, you know, a set world that we know of already, people are going to be, there's just going to be so much, it would be such a hassle and no one would be happy. You would not be able to please anybody. So I think the first thing you need to do is like whip out like a wind waker. You know what I mean? Just like whip out a new world, whip out a whole new thing. Um, the idea is that we have a kid and he's Link. He's the new iteration. He's the he's new generation teens of Link. or teens, something like that. Uh, yeah. I would make him a kid. I, I like the idea of him being a you kid. You like younger? All right. Yeah. Um, Can that be our hashtag uh, for the episode? Not, not. I like them young. Not that one. Oh. Uh, whip out a wing. Whip out a wind waker. Yeah. <laughs> like well, that. no, just see. You know what I mean, though. Just like an original. It's a stick-shaped thing, so it's kind of world that's that's you know clearly. I mean, right. yeah, you can work it into the history, but. Um, right. But yeah, I think that that way you can create a whole new lexicon of characters, and if people want to make that into a game eventually, great. You know, that's fine. But I think. You know, actually, I think if you were to make a show mm-hmm. of, of Zelda and you were to create your own kind of new world for Link mm-hmm. and Zelda and Ganon, that they shouldn't make a game of it, actually. That it that should almost be like its own thing. You know what I mean? It like should that stay should be... as an animated show. They should take advantage right. of making it exclusively for the medium. And that's the thing that right. I've, I kind of talk about, I've talked about before, how like, you you have these like like Caleb and I have had this discussion before like how he doesn't like to have games turned into shows or movies or books or anything like that, um, yeah. and I think that in with the medium that you're using there there ha- there are certain rules that are unwritten but have to be followed. Don't pull a sonic boom. Yeah. Never do a sonic. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> See that, that's that, that's the problem. That that I think is a big problem is when you have the show and then you have the game. I I know what networks are thinking mm-hmm. um but you, yeah you really gotta i don't know they're just it almost always seems like when you do that you're setting it up you're setting one of them up to fail you know they're gonna be like, compared 100%. they are always it's like you know you have twins which one do you like more i mean it's just gonna happen yeah and i think you, that in the Pokemon. sonic yeah. boom debate i think the show won by far <laughs> yeah and then not only that but it's not only do you divided kind of focus set, not, yeah, exactly. So not only are you creating a divided focus, but especially with that genre, like a Sonic genre, you're going to get the people that are like, Sonic Boom is the best, right? <laughs> no, you will. You'll have that. And then and then yeah. obviously with that, you'll have the Sonic Boom is the worst and it's a joke. I mean, unfortunately, both the game and the show are terrible. Oh, yeah. 100%. It's, it's the idea. Right. But what you're doing already is you're taking one entity that you want everyone to like and creating something that's already going to have an, like they're already going to be clashing on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're creating and, two and, chances for failure instead of focusing on one overall success. Right. Or you're just creating one, right. One big failure that everyone fights over. And, yeah. Right. So I think that if you were to take like a, like a Zelda game I mean, the original- or, or, or movie or series, make that its own thing, allow that mm-hmm. to exist in its own world if you want to be able to work that into the history fine you can do that but not through a game. i mean that's exactly what they did with the original animated series i think people have been screaming that since we started this conversation that's exactly yeah. what they did where it's right. it's its own link it has its own story i mean i think you could argue it's link to the past or something of that nature because that was what came out at the same time but it's it's in my opinion clearly its own series it's its own world its own reincarnation of the hero Right. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's what's lovely about, you know, it is very Japanese. Um, it's very folklore. Uh, right. In terms of the mythology of a mm-hmm. character that exists again and again and again and again. He comes back in different forms. He has different powers. He has a different past. He has different. Uh, it's a different world, but it is the same character. There's there is there's old... a connection, but it is not so strong that it overpowers everything else about that character. Yeah, there's um, <clears throat> there's a, a myth. I forgot what it was. Uh, one of you guys may recognize it, or somebody who's listening might. There was a story about these two lovers. Uh, there, there was a 
the, the man and the woman. And the idea was is that in this story, it, it may have been like, an, uh, like a Middle Eastern story. I can't remember. But the, the man and the woman were born again and again and again. Um, mm. And no matter where they were born, their whole purpose in life was to find each other. But they kept being reincarnated again and again just throughout history. Oh, you know what? They did make a movie about it. They made it, I think they made a really terrible movie about it. Um, <laughs> with like Halle Berry and some, I forget. <laughs> anyways, uh, but anyways, I, I love that idea and that concept. It's very myth, mythological in terms of like people reincarnated to take on a role that they consistently take mm-hmm. and they have no memory of it. Um, they don't even know it, but that is the role that they have to play. And I think Link is, they always have that. They have the Link, the Zelda, the Ganon, and, and just like the, I, I love that idea about it. And um, I don't think it would make, I, I don't think you'd really fully be utilizing a series, like the potential of a series, if you banked it off a of pre-existing uh, storyline. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like you'd be wasting right. an opportunity to expand that universe. Right. Well, I think that's all the time we have for this week. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, guys. I had a really fun time. It was a really cool discussion, uh, especially to It was okay. Likewise. It was all right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have to talk about that later. <laughs> Just like immediately hangs up and blocks me on all social media. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell, man? Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed your crowdfunding cast. Uh, yeah. yeah. I sure did. Uh, if you <laughs> like this episode, if you liked Mick, uh, check out Sleepy Cast, Sleepy Cabin. Check out Rice Pirate's YouTube channel and his Patreon and all that jazz. Uh, no, you should totally actually check out. Sleepy actually, Cabin. really do. It's um, as Caleb described it. It's the parts of this podcast where we get off topic, but even better. <laughs> um, and they're no, I'm not even going to compare uh, us. Theirs is actually like pristine. Oh go, 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 go. shush! No, it's it's a it's a great. Yeah. I listen to it every week. I love it. Uh, I'm a little bit face. behind. Uh, what? Nothing. I said I was going to smack his face. <laughs> oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> but only if you're a good boy. <laughs> look who's the oh, na- look who's the naughty boy now Blustered. all right guys it's true uh thank you jeff mick caleb uh yeah so uh this was episode and, uh, 30 thank you later Take care, guys hey. oh my god that was a that was awful Watch out. I was in a band a long time ago. I was in a heavy metal band. Were you? Yeah. What did you play? I didn't play anything. I screamed. It was a heavy oh. metal band. Yeah.
Oh, does this exist, and can I listen to it? It does exist, and I'll I'll see if I can dig it up. It's oh, called God, The Fallen. Yes. It, it's somewhere. I think one of the guys, one of the uh, our old friends who was a producer, he still lives in Malaysia. He uh, found one of our EPs, and I think he uploaded it um, on SoundCloud. So I, I do Sick. have a link. Sick, dude. Is there gonna uh, find? I don't know. I don't. I, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna brag about it. I mean, you know what? The, <laughs> it was the guys... kind of my best work of all time. I no, think. no, no. The, uh. the guys in the band were all really good. They were actual musicians. I was just like some <laughs> screaming front man, but um, it was a lot of fun. Welcome to being a singer. You're just mm. the guy in the front screaming and asking for all the attention. Well, Adam, you're trying to get murdered this podcast, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oof. I think that's actually Jeff. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like, know. I've it's... made it this far. I think you'll be fine. Thank you. We'll see. Um, but, like, I... I don't know. Jake regularly does not wear pants for this podcast. Not wearing pants for this podcast. I Is have it something prob- you specifically do, like time to record a podcast, and you just strip down. Pretty much. Actually, I think yes. It's oh, weird because, wow. like, I have like probably thirty plus sound clips of Jake taking off his pants. <laughs> Those must be some loud ass pants. <laughs> I don't, this he isn't takes, on the. It's a struggle for him because he's kind of like this unzip, and then there's the shifting, and then there's like a little bit of a jump, and it's weird. There's like all this movement going on. I'm kind of concerned. I feel like I should call someone. Get him to adapt. If this isn't like if this isn't in the ending bit, I I might cry. I mean if this was the ending bit, it would end right about here.